I will start the recording since it's seven o'clock and then I am just still waiting for a few members of the committee to, to arrive. Um, while I'm waiting though, I guess I will, I'll just confirm the members of the committee that I think are here already. Uh, Mary Ellen, you're here. Yep. Um, is George on the line yet? I don't see her. I don't see her either. Was Vali Jimenez? I haven't seen uh, Ed Green. Ed, are you here yet? I guess when I heard his voice. Uh, Ed? Uh, Chris Calhoun, I see you're here. And then uh, Kelly? Kelly Buford? Not yet. Okay. Yes, I'm here, Deb. Oh, you are here. Oh, wonderful. Okay, good. Margaret Donato, is Margaret here yet? Uh, David Gelman, you're here. <clears throat> David, are you here? Yes, I am. Oh, sorry, I saw you. Um, it's like Margaret. Uh, is Margaret here? Uh, Margaret, are, is that you? Georgia? Georgia, yes. Ah, you're here. Wonderful. You. <laughs> Good to see you. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, all right. All right, so uh, Ed, Ed Green, I think we have, an, we have quorum, so we can start. Was, was Vali Jimenez? Not yet. And Margaret Donata. Okay. I will keep checking as we get going. Um, are there, um, is there anybody from DOT here? Yes, good evening. Hi, Keith Kalb, Deputy Borough Commissioner, Bronx DOT. Good evening. Good evening. And, uh, sorry, Matthew Rancio, uh, also in the Bronx Borough Commissioner's Office. Keith, are you going to be with us or are you going to be uh, splitting your uh, eyeballs uh, for the uh, Red Sox game? Uh -huh. um, I refuse to answer that question. <laughs> um, what about um, elected officials? Are there, um, is there any elected officials here? Or representatives of elected officials? Enzo uh, here from the Office of Council Member Dinowitz. Uh, who's this? Enzo, Lorenzo? Uh, Lorenzo from Council Member Dinowitz's office. And Thank you. Randy Martos from Assembly Member Dinowitz's office. And I think he's jumping on as well. Okay, wonderful. All right. Is there anybody uh, else? I've got um, uh, Rosemary. You're here from CB8. And I saw I think Hello? I saw Dan. Hey, Rosemary. Oh. All right, who's Hello, next? it's Margaret. Oh, hey, Margaret. How are you? So far, so good. <laughs> huh? I'm good. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> okay. Not too quiet. Oh, and this year as well. Wonderful. And then uh, the uh, was Bali Jimenez is is, is Bali here yet? Uh, and then Omar, I'm gonna uh, just uh, mute you really quick, just because of the background noise. So we have a quorum, so I'm gonna call the meeting to order. It is a seven oh five. Um, let's see. 
So um, the, I want to just thank everybody for attending this evening. Um, I have a few housekeeping items uh, for the discussion tonight. So first, uh, as community board committee, we loosely follow Robert's rules of order. So we will be following the amended agenda that was previously distributed. So if we open a topic to general discussion, we ask that if you would like to speak, that you raise your hand and I will call on you. Um, if we have a, a lot of people who would like to speak um, on an individual topic, you may only get to speak once. So make sure it counts. I've got two people in, one sec. Um, let's see. Uh, if you're not speaking, we ask that you keep yourself muted uh, to prevent background noise from interrupting other people. Um, if you are on Zoom, to raise your hand, you select um, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see um, a reactions button and uh, you select there and you'll have the option of raising your hand. That's also where you go to lower your hand after you have spoken. Um, and if you change your name in the, in the Zoom window, it will assist us in entering your name into the minutes. So we'll know who you are. If you're on the phone, you press star six to mute and unmute yourself. And you press star nine to raise your hand or to lower your hand. So, and then uh, I will call on folks in the order that they raise their hand. If you're on the phone and you're unable to raise your hand for some reason, uh, I will just call at the end of a discussion period just to let you, just to let anybody who's on a phone who's having trouble raising their hand speak. So we'll sort out if there's more than one person who'd like to do it at that time. Um, the other thing is just to be, to be respectful of the committee and. I, I, I would like to try to go only until nine. So uh, I will give warnings as we go, just to play timekeeper um, in case we start to run behind. So um, this is uh, the first meeting with our newest members of the, of the board uh, or of the committee and, and the board, I guess. Um, uh, Kelly Buford, uh, Christopher Calhoun, and Osvaldo Jimenez. Uh, I would like to just welcome all of you to the Traffic and Transportation Committee. It's so wonderful to, to have you on this committee. I'm so glad you decided to join. Um, I hope we, uh, we keep you engaged in, in, in the, in for the next year, for your first year on the, on the board. Um, I am going to start, I would like to start with the minutes from September 13th, 2021, um, which was a joint environment and sanitation traffic and transportation committee meeting, um, which were distributed to the committee members ahead of the meeting. So for the committee members, um, does anyone on the committee have any changes that uh, you would like me to make? Uh, no changes? Oh, David, yes. Uh, I'm trying to understand, you, you sent out a, um, an email to us uh, last week saying that there was an issue about a resolution under the open meetings law. I'd like to know what it is because that has an impact on the content of the minutes. So uh, David, at the moment, I would just like you to look at the minutes that we sent I don't, and if, the, if that accurately reflects the minutes that happened, um, the meeting as it was experienced. I can't actually speak to any open meetings law issue. I mean, I know that there were there were some concerns regarding the um, the that the, there were people who wanted to have us discuss the letter um, that's going out to um, regarding KPOC and Palisade, which we'll talk about later um, to discuss that on the meeting. But I, that should have no impact on the minutes. So I really uh, would like I, to I, just talk about the minutes. I beg to differ. Mm -hmm. If uh, we voted on we voted on a resolution, and that is part of the minutes of the meeting. And if you're saying that there is some invalid element of that resolution, then I, that does have an impact on the minutes. So if you read the minutes, is, is there something in the minutes that is not, the, is not what happened in the meeting? No. Right. So uh, let me see if Ed has a question. I see Ed also has his hand up. Ed, do you have something you'd like I to just, say? I just was going to say that if anything come, came up later that somebody deemed objectionable couldn't it just be amended at the full board or at, at or afterwards anyway even if it was approved now yeah i think so but we, I mean, we I... are aware of an issue we were uh advised that there was an issue in the content of the meeting mm -hmm. and you said that you would inform us about it and before we vote on the minutes we should know what this issue is and whether it has an impact on the content of the meeting 
Um, I am not aware of any details of any issue involving the open meetings law. I just know. Well, that... Excuse me. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Yeah. Deb, you're so. You... So let what me, was the email so, you sent us last week then? So, so Dave, let me finish my sentence. I'm sorry. So, yeah, 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 no, it's fine. So oh, I'm gonna move you over the center. I'm realizing I'm like speaking off into the side. So, um, so we had our meeting. In our meeting, we said we would work on the letter for um, KPAC Palisade um, between the meeting. We, we essentially had our discussion. We were going to try to find consensus. There was some concern, I think, externally that's um, about an open meeting law thing. So I was asked, I guess. And so I was asked to, you know, review and then to, um, you know, that we wanted to just simply have the discussion at the meeting. And so this is what we're doing, just we're being transparent. So did, I don't but, wanna- But did we pass so they, they, a they, resolution? We didn't, uh, we, what do you mean, did we pass a resolution? You mean regarding KPOC policy? Yes. No, we were going to work on a letter and then we were going to send it. And that was the plan. But there's no resolution. We said we were going to work on a letter and that we were going to send it. And we still have not finished that letter. So that's what we need to do. Would you like, would you feel more comfortable? Why don't we, I think if, if the minutes reflect as you remember the meeting, then we should approve them. And then if there's something we need to go back and edit later because we feel as though it was incorrect, we can, I believe we can make that edit later. So um, is there uh, any other, uh, any other, anybody on the committee, does anybody want to make any other changes to the minutes? Okay. So seeing as no um, changes to the minutes, I will, uh, I will move that they are approved um, unanimously, so I'm going to. No, I'm a, I'm a abstaining from that vote. Okay, so then I guess I think I need to take a vote then. Um, no, 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 I think uh, my guess I, is that everybody else is voting for it. Right, but let me do the let me do this correctly then. If you're if you want to abstain, I can't uh, I can't do it through acclamation. So um, so then is there anybody who is opposed to the meeting minutes as presented? No. Is there? And, I'm, and gonna, I'm going to abstain as well. You're going to abstain as well? Okay. And I will abstain. That's Kelly. Okay. So we got three abstentions from the approval of the minutes. I'm a little afraid. <laughs> um, okay. Um, all right. So and do, I, do I have anybody opposed to the minutes? So Kelly. Ed. All right. So I'm going to assume everybody else is in favor and David. All right, moving on. Oops, this is not the Zoom minutes. Let's see. All right, so next I'm going to, I'm going to move on to the uh, chair's report. Wait a second. I'm going to, just, I'm going to move on to the chair's report. Um, so first, uh, first up is the DOT public hearing on moped share rules like on, to establish a permitting system for moped shares. Um, the DOT public hearing will be on Thursday, October 28th at 2 p.m. Um, also, the DOT public hearing on permanent car share rules um, will be on Monday, November 8th at 2 p.m. Uh, if you want more details about either of those things, then... Um, then uh, please just contact the board office and we can uh, give you uh, more details. Um, to follow up on our, oh, to, um, we had a resolution that the committee passed uh, several, several months ago regarding the Orloff Avenue in Cannon Place um, improvements to the intersection, um, pedestrian safety improvements there and reconstruction of the curb. Um, I heard back from DOT and they're expecting to uh, be able to get back to us on that uh, by December of 2021. So towards the end of the year. So that will be, that will be great. Um, and then I was also asked to let folks know that Con Ed is doing work on Thursday at uh, Henry, uh, Henry Hudson Parkway East Service Road from near Manhattan College. I'm sorry, near Manhattan College Parkway. Um, so if you uh, see signs that ask you not to park in certain designated areas, please uh, do not do that. They've been having trouble getting to the, um, the main relay panel in the street. 
And then finally, um, paving. There should be some paving this month happening. Uh, Henry had some Parkway eastbound from k to uh, West 238, um, Dickinson Avenue from Van Cortlandt Park South to Sedgwick, and uh, Van Cortlandt Park South um, from Bailey to Broadway should all be getting paved hopefully in October. Um, so that is the end of the chair's report. And now I want to move on to the, the first item on the agenda, which is pedestrian safety at k and Johnson Avenue. Um, so uh, uh, Riverdale resident Ruth Mullen was, was killed tragically on September 7th as she crossed the street at Capoc and Johnson Avenue. Um, I know that our elected officials, uh, both City Councilman uh, Eric Dinowitz, Assembly, uh, Assemblyman Jeffrey Dinowitz, and State Senator Alexander Biaggi have been working very closely with DOT to address the street conditions that led to this accident. Um, I, I want to open the floor uh, and uh, I know that last week DOT provided an update, um, and so I wanted to open the floor to um, to the assembly, oh, to the city, city councilman. I see you've got your, your hand up, so I will let you start. And then if uh, also if DOT would like to give an update. Yes, hello. I, oh, is DOT here as well? Uh, yeah, we got two folks from DOT. Okay, I, I, then I'll, I'll be quick because they'll be able to share more than I will, but um, obviously you... you mentioned the, the, the it was it was horrific this tragedy and you know immediately when that happened um the assemblyman and i we held the press conference kira gannon um from the community board was there um we followed up i think it was less than a week later we met with the department of transportation with the borough commissioner um and you know we we have you know a lot of traffic issues but I, but i have to say they moved rather quickly to start implementing some of the things we spoke about so last friday i drove up there um they put in some what they call left turn calming measures which are little bumps um in the road to to, to guide the traffic and slow it down and you know so i drove up there to kind of see these improvements and in, a, in a total new york moment some guy who was on his terrace screamed out at me he said hey come on up come on up so I went up to some stranger's apartment and uh, I was able to see the mm. traffic improvement from the terrace. Yeah, that was uh, your life. Um, DOT has committed to other safety improvements that we've asked for. Um, they've committed to um, redoing the ramps to make them ADA compliant. They did repaint the crosswalks to make them more visible. Um, they committed to moving the lamppost to give greater visibility. And I think the DOT will say whether or not they've started their light study, but they committed to doing the light study to see if, if they can put a traffic light there, which is what I know a lot of residents wanted. Um, and, I, and I do want to thank them on, on these things. They moved quickly. Of course, it's never quickly enough um, because we want these things to happen now because we want to make sure that people are safe. I, I, I will share here. I think the left turn calming measures can be improved with plastic uh, bollards. Um, and just in line with we want to prevent these things from happening in the first place, um, you know, my office has sent out traffic uh, study requests or requests for speed bumps and stop signs at other parts throughout the district. Um, we sent those to DOT since I've been in office since April. Um, but I think, but, but, you know, these things are really important. Um, and we see more, more and more people driving uh, erratically and we're hearing about more deaths. So I, I did reach out to the mayor's office to kind of press them to you know, to, 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 to say how important this was, these studies or these installations happen sooner. So I and my office and the assemblyman really are pushing for these uh, traffic safety measures that really slow traffic down because whether it's that hill at Johnson at Kapok or whether it's anywhere else in community board eight, no one needs to be speeding through the neighborhood. And if we could put a speed bump in or a stop sign in uh, to help slow that traffic down, that's what we wanna do. Well, I appreciate that. That's a 100% agree. So thank you so much for all the work you're doing. Um, so next up, I guess, is the Assemblyman Dinot. Hello, everybody can hear? Yes. Good evening, everybody. So the council member pretty much said it all, so I'm not going to repeat, except to say that this horrible tragedy um, it is, is, should, shouldn't be repeated anywhere in any community. And I, I realize, I, I think I had mentioned maybe at the rally that uh, the council member, the community board and I organized uh, shortly after uh, that this happened, 
Um, I, I can think of four people that I know that were, uh, that were, their, their lives were tragically cut short because of, uh, of traffic, I'll, I'll call them accidents. They were obviously weren't on purpose, but at various locations, including this location, including 259th and Riverdale, including 232nd and, and Netherland. And every time something like this happens, you know, every, people get upset, rightfully so. We try to figure out, is there anything we could do better? So I, I'm pleased uh, that DOT is is working with the community, working with us, um, and and has moved quickly on at least some of the changes. You know whether or not a traffic signal, red light, uh, should be there or not. Um, that that's something they need to decide quickly. I know a lot of people want that. Maybe that's uh, maybe that'll be helpful. But we we need to have changes happen uh, as quickly as possible. So I'm I'm glad things are moving along, and I know many people on this meeting. Um, you know, voiced their opinion and they were upset uh, at what happened. Um, you know, the fact that, oh, that nearly 75 people in the community came out on literally less than a day's notice, I think is indicative of, uh, of people's feelings. And not to mention the fact that uh, Ms. Mullen, who, you know, who was, was killed in this incident, um, you know, was well known by a lot of people, especially in the Winston Churchill, but beyond that, and but even if she wasn't known, um, it, it was it was obviously still terrible. So I just want to say, you know, thank you to everybody who's who's really trying to be uh, positive in terms of making whatever changes are necessary. And I appreciate DOT, the council member, and the community board and all its members. So um, that, that's it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank thank you, Assemblyman Dinowitz. Um, and. Uh, I, I do want to also open the floor up to uh, New York City DOT. If you'd like to comment on what you're doing. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, uh, Assembly Member and Council Member Dinowitz. Um, yeah. Uh, we are saddened also by this tra traffic, traffic comment. And I'm so mad because. Um, thank you uh, for the excellent recap of the safety improvements that we've already taken uh, at the intersection of Kapok and Johnson. Uh, what you guys described is absolutely correct. We have completed the installation of the left turn measures, the left turn calming measures at the intersection, and we have refurbished all the crosswalk markings at the intersection. We still have a few things, as you guys described, that we are still working on. We are um, working, as you guys already mentioned, uh, looking to relocate the streetlight at that intersection to make it uh, a little more visible uh, to uh, motorists while they're driving around that area. And let's see, what else? Oh, we're upgrading the ped ramps at the intersection. And we are working with the MTA to assess the investigation to ensure that proper training of their drivers uh, is completed. That is what we have right now. And I'm uh, sorry, I, the most important thing, the signal study is still ongoing. Sorry, that's the one, yes. Uh, thank you. And so when you say upgrade of the pedestrian ramps, um, what kind of upgrade will that be? Uh, so right now, a couple of the, in, the legs of the intersection don't have proper ped ramps installed. So we'll be installing them. Okay. And so the, the ped ramps are missing completely? No. Um, on the, uh, trying to figure it, the north, no, the northwest corner. Okay. Got it. But there's uh, crosswalks in all directions, right? Yes. The, the new painted crosswalks? Okay. Yes. Very right, great. Um, uh, thank you for that. I mean, and thank you for just uh, to both the assemblymen and the city councilmen and for DOT for being so responsive um, to this. I see David uh, Gelman's hand is up. Uh, David, do you have a question? Yes, uh, Keith. Uh, preliminarily, do you, does DOT have any opinions on the, the uh, size of the crosswalks crossing Johnson Avenue, uh, the two of them on the north and south side of the intersections? as well as the, the length of the crosswalk 
crossing Capuck Street? Are they uh, too big, too short, too long, uh, or uh, appropriate? The, the I'm sorry, you're going to have to <laughs> clarify that question. So you okay. think the crossing is too long on both? No, no I'm, I'm asking what DOT's opinion is. Are they too short? Are they too long? Or are they just right? I mean, the geometry of the roadway is is what it is. It's a, it was, and you remember this location. This was a Y intersection, right? Many, yes. many years ago. And it, we built out the one corner, the southwest corner was built out with that green street. Yes. Right? So we did that, I think it was 2008, I want to say. It might have been 2009. Um, and which narrowed the geometry of that intersection and made it a proper T, although most of the traffic is going south onto Johnson Avenue. Um, the, uh, we, we reconfigured the geometry and narrowed those crossings. Are you getting at that you want us to narrow the crossings more? No, 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 I'm, I'm asking at oh. this point, do you think that they are too long, too short or uh, quite appropriate still. I, I mean, they're appropriate for this intersection. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you, David. Uh, Dan, uh, well, actually, wait for you get to Dan. Uh, is there anybody else on the committee that has a question? Uh, seeing no hands, uh, Dan. Do you have a question? Oh, uh, uh, actually, actually, Deb, I, I had my hand up for a while to address, I guess, a question was from before. For Ruth Mullen, I, I don't have a question. It was just two points of information. One was to answer David's question about the open meetings issue. Why don't we and, um, um, do, I, I hear you. Why don't we uh, do that just once, when we're again, the other side of the Ruth, Ruth Mullen thing, we're talking about um, Palisade and KPOC. Uh, sure, sure. And um, and we can go from that, which is fine. I'll address the open meetings issue then, Dan. Okay, that's great. Uh, Mary Ellen. Hi. Um, in that intersection, I originally lived there in the 70s at that intersection on K-Pock Street, a 510 K-Pock Street. And there was actually nothing there, no stop sign, anything was like more havoc. I mean, what are the chances of actually getting a light? I mean, I lived there as a kid and it was like really crazy. People come flying down. And one time we almost got hit as kids because somebody just got out of control coming down and almost hitting us. And, and luckily it was raining that day we went back in, but I strongly feel that a traffic light should be there because that's such a crazy intersection. And like, um, even when we was missing a stop sign, it was like havoc, when havoc struck. So I, I strongly believe there should be um, a traffic signal there. Like preferably a traffic light. Thanks. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Is, is there anybody in the else in the committee who or in the uh, community who would like to to say anything or provide feedback to DOT on this proposed plan? Uh, Camelia, your hand is up. Uh, yes. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask because I mean you know that this is an intersection in a T, and I mean we often see we residents kind of know the way but you often see movers or, or lifts or cars that go up north on johnson and they don't know if the main road continues to be on k-pop or a continuation on 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 johnson so i just wonder if it would be possible to install one of those signs that basically you know like on the mountain road do you see what the main road and kind of the, the fact that it's a side um it's a side road continuation of johnson i mean there is such a sign one of those lateral T's at the intersection immediately prior uh, on Johnson. So I just wonder if for people that are not local, that sign is a simple sign, wouldn't be be useful to, to be installed uh, where the stop sign is going uh, on Johnson uh, um, north toward, toward Cape Hook. Because again, you can immediately spot the people that stop at the intersection and they just like don't know which way is the, is the main way. Just a suggestion for DOT. Thank you, Camelia. Uh, Keith, do you want to respond to that? Uh, I'm not quite sure what type of sign Camelia is referring to. Um, if you have a 
a location that has a similar sign. We can take a look at it. Yes, but, it's yes, it's just in one of those uh, black on yellow signs that shows sort of the what is the main road and which is the lateral case. There's exactly I said I just drove by there. There's a sign like that at the intersection uh, prior as you as you climb on on Johnson, basically showing the main road that is basically Johnson continuing on Capoc. And then the fact that it's a Johnson then turns out to be a, a lateral going further down to, to the blue building and towards the Spite and Dyville train station. Amelia, are you referring to the no outlet signage? It's like a, the triangle no, sign. No, no, no. I mean, outlet. you know how you, when you drive the mountain roads and then they show you sometimes like what's the main road and then it's a lateral. It's kind of like a, you know, to show that the main road is like a U a little bit, a lateral U, and the fact that it's a lateral, you know, because people are hesitating in that intersection, not knowing, should I stop and turn to the right, or should I continue going left? But we, we want people to stop at the intersection. No, I want, I know. I but we don't want people, we, we, don't, we don't want people to, in advance of the intersection, decide that they already know where they're going. It's, I think it's fine that people stop at the intersection and then Either go yeah, yeah. It's absolutely on Johnson or, or make the right onto K-pop. Right, right. But they don't, <laughs> right. But it's not visible that it's a U even if they don't know the road. Uh, it, it was just a suggestion, Keith. So right. again, okay. it, thank you. Yeah. And there's we'll, a we'll sign like prior, by the way. Yes. Thank but you. it's a signalized intersection. It is absolutely. And that stop yeah. is absolutely necessary. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just indicating that the possible usefulness of a sign black on yellow showing kind of the configuration of the intersection. Okay, great, great. Thank you, Camelia. I appreciate Thanks. it. Um, uh, Craig Sachs. Hey, Keith, when you uh, do a traffic study for a traffic light, do you ever consider a pedestrian activated traffic light that brings all traffic to a stop? We do. And, okay, so that would be something good for this intersection. Um, and that's it. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, Keith, is there a different level to qualify for a pedestrian act activated, or is it the same? No, it's, we call them leading pedestrian intervals. Um, well, no, not an LPI. Yeah, no, this is the one where the but there's a button that a, a person would press and that that would be, I assume it would be for when there's not a lot of um, pedestrian traffic. Um, you know, is it, you know, so that a person can actually say that they're there um, to, to, uh, to change the traffic signal. Um, is that something that would, would have a different level, a, a different threshold to qualify for a, at an intersection? Uh, I'll have to look into it and get back to you. I have an intersection where you actually have one in the Bronx. Uh, would it help if I give you that intersection? Sh sure. Okay. I'll be back and it's, I'll, I'll, I'll update you in, in a bit in a text message because I have to check my map. Thanks, Craig. Uh, Vittorio. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, Ruth was in my uh, Express West Advocacy Group, and I know that she was a huge advocate of having a traffic light at this intersection. So I wrote directly to the DOT probably a couple of weeks ago, making a formal request for a traffic light there. Uh, I went to the intersection. I am very familiar with it. Um, a lot of the express buses and vehicles do not come to a full stop at the stop signs. They come to a rolling stop. Mm -hmm. And then they made the, the turn on to Johnson. So uh, at that intersection, uh, while I wouldn't say that it should be narrowed per se, I did not feel comfortable trying to cross there at 10 o'clock in the morning or whatever time it was before I went to that rally. And I'm six four, I'm, I got pretty long legs, I'm a pretty young guy. I, I went to the other side of the street and crossed. So uh, I, I would say that there should be a traffic light there. Uh, and as I said before, I made a formal request for that. And I also wrote to the NTA <laughs> requesting that uh, there is uh, some training uh, going on with the drivers to the extent possible. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Um, uh, Keith, uh, Victoria raises a good point. Does it make a difference if people on this call make a, <clears throat> make a request themselves um, for a traffic light? Or is it really about traffic counts and injuries? It, it, the signal stu we're only going to we're only performing one signal study, which mm -hmm. has already been started. Okay. So, 
Vittorio will get a response based on the study that we already started for this intersection. But the demand for the signal signal study it, itself or for the signal doesn't influence it's, it's, whether it's, it's placed or not. That's correct. Okay, okay great, thank you. Um, uh, Michael Lamavola? Thanks, Deb. Um, I, I apologize if I'm echoing something that some others have said, and I'm sure that Keith and, and, and Matthew and others from DOT will, will point out. But you know, I think as part of the, the, the study for a signal warrant, the one thing to keep in mind is when it's green, the behavior is, is the way people drive when it's green, which is to say, you know, a, a full stop controlled intersection in theory does ask all vehicles to stop. Whereas if you have a signalized intersection at certain times, the cars that have green lights proceed with the understanding that they're free to go. So I, I understand the concern around safety and I'm not trying to say one way or the other. I just it's a thing that has to be balanced. And I, and I think Craig's uh, point, and I, and I don't know about the Warren analysis for either the two treatments that I believe he's referring to, which are either sometimes referred to as RRFBs, which is not, doesn't actually have like a, um, they're essentially just a, a lights that alert people to a mid block crossing usually, or Hawks, which is another treatment, which is still, you know, it's, it's past US DOT guidance on, you know, pedestrian countermeasures, yada, yada, yada. Um, but that the hawk would probably be the, the most closest thing to what I think Deb, you were just getting at, which is it's an all, it's a signalized all stop for vehicles that allows pedestrians to move. Um, it's not, it, by no means is it a normal kind of thing, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping guessing that it, it's part of the consideration when doing a warrant analysis or, or might be. Um, that's, that's, so that's my one thing just for everyone to keep in mind again, so green, green lights, cars behave as if they have green lights and on a curve like this, the sight distances, you know, you could imagine a, a car going down KPOC with a green light hanging a really hard left and not seeing someone walking off the corner. Um, but again, we'll leave it to DOT and the experts to do their warrant analysis. That was my first point. My second point, I just want, want to say, and Deb, maybe you push this to come up later on, but you know, there was a, a long and intense process to talk about the importance of pedestrian safety in this community surrounding Independence Avenue through the, the spring and summer months. And it essentially resulted at a possible maybe recommendation of having a few flexible delineators along Independence Avenue. I just think if this community really wants to honor the, the life of this, the, the, this community member and really take on pedestrian safety, Let's not be reactive. Let's start making those investments. Let's start pushing and asking DOT to do these things proactively, right? Not after these horrible things happen. And, and then everyone says, oh, you know, I, I'm out there. We're going to ask for this. We want to say, start setting the tone now. Start working with DOT now. And it's going to take a little bit of compromise. And it maybe requires, you know, that we all have to drive slower through things and that we're not going to, it's not going to be as easy to double park and yada, 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 this way or that way. And, I, and set aside bike lanes. I don't, I don't care about that. The point is that process around independence was how do we start making walking safer in the neighborhood, period. And it all kind of grows from there. So let's start doing that now more seriously all around the community board and let's not wait anymore. Great, great. thank you, Michael. Uh, Sue, uh, do you wanna say something? Yes, are you um, just trying to start my video? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay. I had two uh, questions, uh, which uh, the first is, what about enforcement of existing uh, uh, traffic uh, rules, in, in particular the uh, stop signs? Uh, my understanding is that people go through the stop signs all the time at that intersection. And my second question is about the investigation of Ruth's uh, death. Um, uh, when will we know the results of that investigation? So uh, regarding the enforcement at the stop signs, I don't think there's anybody from NYPD here. Um, uh, Ed, you're the, the chair of the uh, uh, safety committee. Has any of this 
uh, come toward for your towards your committee as an enforcement issue? The the only thing I'll say is that when asked in the past about um, having officers monitor specific areas in terms of this this particular area, I, I don't recall coming up. But anytime it's been brought up that particular areas be watched as problem areas uh, for traffic uh, violations, the the response is usually they just don't have the manpower to have somebody sitting there um, for extended periods of time to monitor specific areas. Of course, they're going to enforce these, uh, you know, the laws if they see them, but having somebody there to constantly monitor a specific area doesn't seem feasible with the manpower they have. So that's basically my short answer. Yeah, right. no, I, that's a yeah. real concern. Um, because obviously if we, even for a short amount of time, um, had some enforcement there, perhaps that would um, discourage people from going uh, down the hill, um, you know, quickly. Yeah, that's a question to ask. Uh, if it's about a specific location, that's a question to ask, uh, I would say, Commanding Officer Gervin of the 5 directly. I'm just mm -hmm. responding on what their prior uh, prior mm -hmm. answers were to certain uh, problems in different areas. Mm -hmm. And then to follow up, I don't know if uh, Councilman Dinowitz or if the Assemblyman's office has any time frame of uh, for the investigation. I, uh, the answer is we have not been given a time frame. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. This seems to me, you know, that there's not that many issues here that have to be investigated, but we don't know the answer to that. Um, but I, I, I guess just to reiterate, uh, I think that Michael was absolutely right. We really have to make changes that take into account first and foremost pedestrian safety even if sometimes that means a little bit of inconvenience for motorists yeah no 100 percent. and if there are intersections that you or the or councilman denowitz are partic in particular looking at um, and you would love the uh, support of the community board um, i'm sure we would love to to support you where we can Sure. Why don't you mention that? I brought up a new intersection to DOT just yesterday, but maybe you'll put it on a future agenda. And that's the intersection of Independence and KPOC, which is essentially a kind of a five way yeah. intersection. And not mm -hmm. every, uh, it, it's not an all way stop. And I, I got to tell you, when I drive there, which I do, or when I walk there, even more scary, um, it's hard to sometimes figure out how to cross because it's, it's, it's very complicated. We have complicated intersections in our board. So. Yeah, no, I'm familiar with that one. That is particularly complicated because uh, I believe the bus circles around at that intersection as well. So I would yeah. love to put that, we, we can put that on an upcoming agenda. That would be okay. wonderful. Um, I see, I see, uh, Craig, your hand is still up. Did you find your um, example of light for-, um, for Yeah, uh, um, uh, Keith, the uh, yep. intersection that has the uh, pedestrian activated, all car stop is the uh, in the Bronx. It's the Cross Bronx Expressway Service Road that leads onto the Bronx River Parkway, right in front of Noble Playground. And when you activate the pedestrian signal, all cars coming onto the highway come to a complete stop, so you can cross. And that's that's the only place in the Bronx where I've really right. seen the all car stop. Right. Because it's, it's it's because it's a it's only vehicles that are crossing. It's not a it's not an intersection. It's a highway ramp. Yeah. So that's yes. and, so and at, at intersections we don't generally have um, intersections where all vehicles stop and only pedestrians move. We have a leading pedestrian in New York City. What we use is what I mentioned earlier is a leading pedestrian interval, which allows all cars to stop and allows the pedestrians to move in advance of allowing the vehicles to move. Yes, I, I'm aware I'm aware of those. And, and you have a lot of cars that actually start advancing as soon as they see the walk signal, not paying attention to the red light that they have. Th thank you, Keith. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Um, David Gelman, 
Um, oh, and also we have, uh, it's, it's quarter to eight, I'm just doing a time check. We have uh, three people up to speak. So I'll let you three will be the last and then we'll go to the committee for next steps. Uh, David, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, uh, my understanding is that this tragedy occurred about nine or 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and the evening of the, um, the press uh, conference that uh, the electeds had nearby, I drove by the, the uh, KPOC uh, uh, Johnson intersection at night and the lighting was seriously deficient. Um, I think that the improvement of the lighting will have a dramatic positive impact but it's still, uh, uh, we would look forward to seeing the result of a traffic light study. But I, I just wanted to note that I think that uh, much better lighting would have a, a big impact on that intersection. Mike, very good, thank you, David. Uh, Elvis. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to, before I put up a comment about the current situation at K-Pot intersection, I don't know much about it, but I've driven around it once in the past. Um, my question is, like our Assemblyman Dinowitz mentioned that he introduced uh, an intersection just recently. Is it possible to reopen um, a request to install the stop sign at a particular intersect uh, in a particular street here in my neighborhood because things uh, we haven't had incidents where our mem our city members or re residents haven't been run over but it's an issue because uh, it's an intersection that is um, for for kindergarten school and that's the intersection where we have the most people standing, especially in, in school hours when they're picking up their kids or or attending uh, their young. And- uh, um, uh, Elvis, I'm sorry, which, uh, which intersection is this that you're talking it's, about? Uh, um, uh, it's on uh, Ains Place and Webb Avenue in the Bronx. Oh, yeah. In Webb Avenue. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's. Um, so I want to keep this discussion about the the Johnson yeah. K Park intersection, but um, we can certainly, um, if you will, reach out to the board office uh, with yes. this request. Then we can sch schedule a discussion for another uh, another meeting. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's what I wanted to to know about. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And then, last but not least, uh, Tom Proctor and Sandra. I only see a V and an O, but I'm sure there's more. Tom and Tom and Sandra. Thanks. Um, yeah, hi, my name is Sandra Voss, and this is my husband, Tom Proctor. Um, we're memory, members of Families for Safe Streets. And for those who don't know, Families for Safe Streets is a group of people who have either lost a family member in a crash or suffered a serious injury. And um, tragically, Tom lost his brother, Charlie, to a car crash last year at a dangerous intersection, uh, much like Johnson and Capac is. And we just wanted to thank the DOT for the changes that they've already implemented and also ask if there are plans to address safety concerns in other nearby areas. Um, we ask this because we know the importance of recognizing that Ruth's death, unfortunately, is not an isolated incident. Um, and since 2011, there have actually been 18 pedestrian deaths in CB8, about one per year. Um, so similar to what Councilman Dinowitz said, we just wanted to ask the DOT what other safety improvements are planned in CB8. Good question. Thank you. Um, we, um, thank you for the question, yes. Um, right now, I don't have anything off the top of my head, but we did just complete a safety improvement project for Mashaloo Avenue, where we narrowed the crossings uh, and narrowed the travel lanes for, for vehicles um, and installed high visibility crosswalks where necessary. Uh, we are constantly looking to install enhanced crosswalks in Commune Board 8. That is our one of our big programs in Commune Board 8. And we um, are always looking for locations to enhance pedestrian safety. Yes. Yes. And, and in reference to sort of the, the general area and, and that, are, is there anything under 
consideration to reduce speeds on Johnson more generally, for example? I mean, you mentioned. Well, the, we don't have any plans other than the ones that we've already discussed tonight at Johnson and KPOC. Johnson is a bit tricky because of the topography of the of the roadway. It's also a bus and truck route, so we can't do speed bumps here. Um, but we can we can look at other things. Um, so Keith, if there are people in the community who are concerned about specific intersections or you know, they've gone on a crashmapper.org and they can see that where the you know the crashes have happened and it's in their neighborhood or near their school or synagogue. Yep. Um, what's the best path for them to work productively with the OT to identify these uh, intersections or stretches of road? So a great path is to either contact the community board because every time we do a safety improvement project, we come to the community board as our first touch point um, to see if there's consensus that we wanna do some improvements. Now, usually a lot of our improvements require the loss of parking, mm -hmm. like when we do enhanced crossings, uh, and that is often a very touchy subject in, in Community Board 8. Um, we do a lot of neck downs uh, and things like that, and that has other impacts. Um, you know, um, so the best place for a person to go to is to the Community Board, or they can contact us directly. If they have a location they really feel strongly about, we can take a look at it based, uh, based on their recommendation of it being a, a concern of theirs okay. and you can go to our website or contact 311. Okay. All right. Um, uh, David, is, uh, thank you for that answer, Keith. And thank you, Tom and, and Sandra for coming on the call. Uh, it, I'm very sorry for the reason you're on the call, but um, it is, it is, I do appreciate you taking your time um, and to share your experience. Um, it's, it's very meaningful and important to do. Uh, David, I think you have two hands up. I, or I see <laughs> yeah. fingers and a hand, so um, I'll, let, I'll let you yes. uh, go again. Yes, just uh, quickly. Keith, can you answer, uh, related to Tom's question, uh, halfway down the hill on Johnson Avenue, there is a new speed camera. Is it bi-directional? That is to say, measuring going yeah. downhill and uphill? Um, I can't confirm that there's a speed camera there. There is, I assure I you, it's been there for I, about I six weeks. Yeah, um, it is not bi-directional, it's for one direction. Uh, going downhill, okay. Uh, that's my assumption, yes. Okay, that thank you. my assumption. That is, that's at least some measure of uh, speed control on Johnson. Right. I don't like it, but <laughs> I, I understand it. So, um, so thank you, David. I wanna come back to the committee um, so uh, to respond, um, it, I think it would be appropriate for us to send a letter just in support of the, of the study of a traffic signal um, and improving lighting at the intersection. I wanted to get a sense from the committee whether you had a, a preference for a resolution or a letter. Um, and, if, uh, and I guess while Keith is here, if, if DOT has a preference uh, from us for a, a, a resolution or a letter. I would prefer a letter, a, re a request for traffic signal and additional lighting. Okay. Uh, uh, Ed, did I see your hand go up for a second or? Nope. Okay. Um, uh, Dan, your hand is up. Yeah, if the committee is asking for a change in, in lighting or, or a change in, in street furniture, that's really something that should go to the board. For, for a, a change for in For a lighting? resolution, if you're asking for a change, that's something that should go to the board. I think we would be asking for a, a study um, for uh, of the lighting and a traffic signal and then for it to come back to the committee. And I'm sure so then, Deputy Commissioner, would... perhaps Deputy Commissioner Kalb can, can kind of discuss when we do ask for a study, if, they, if DOT conducts a study, more often than not, they're gonna move forward with that change. That's correct. That's, that's correct. If you, bring, if you highlight, if, if you highlight a problem, if right. you highlight a problem to us and we identify and agree that there is a problem, we will move forward. Okay. So right. I, have no, I have no objection to what, what you guys are right. discussing right now, you know, but that's something that rises to the level of going to the full board. Okay, I'm, fine with, I'm fine with that. Um, 
Uh, Rosemary, I see your hand is up and then I'm gonna go with Ed. Ed, your hand is up now, right? Yes, my hand is up. I just, I wanted to comment on the letter versus resolution. Um, I, I find it. Oh, wait a second, I, I will mute. Yes, continue, continue Rosemary. Okay, I find it a disturbing um, uh, a trend that letters are going out from committees and without full community board participation. These are serious issues and we are a community board. And I believe an issue, especially where a woman's life was lost and where changes are being asked and studies are being asked for that the full board has a right and should speak to this issue. So uh, I'm not a member of your committee, but I, I, I strongly recommend that you do resolutions and not a letter. Thank no, you. I, I appreciate that, Rosemary. Um, and thank you for your guidance on it. I, I will say that as a, a brand new chair, and this is my second meeting um, as a chair, that that was why I wanted to ask. I prepared it as a resolution, uh, assuming that the rest of the uh, board would want to also weigh in on this. It kind of, is, I think the same logic, Rosemary, that it's an important issue, it's a serious issue, and that probably the rest of the board would also want to, to say something. So I, I have kind of a draft of a resolution that I can we can discuss as a committee. Um, Ed, you're on the committee, uh, your hand is up. What would you like to say? Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate the, the importance of what was just said by, by Keith that um, regarding DOC's tendency to, uh, DOT's tendency to uh, move ahead with stuff sent in letters. So um, that would bypass the, the board process. So just as a member of this committee, with that being on the record and that being said, and we know that, um, I can't imagine me supporting any letters uh, from this committee moving forward that don't go uh, through the full board first, just based on what was said tonight on, on that. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thanks. Yeah, I, I appreciate that point of view, Ed. I think that, you know, we'll see how the rest of the year plays out. There may be things that are not controversial that make sense as a letter. I mean, certainly Dan sent out a lot of letters as a chair, then that's not a controversial thing to do and other committee, um, committee chairs do as well. So we'll just play it by year as we go. Um, this one, I would like to um, put forth a, a resolution then. Um, uh, so I, I put together some rough language for it. Um, so whereas on September 7th at 8.30 p.m., local resident Ruth Mullen was tragically struck, actually, and, and killed by an express bus driver en route down Capoc Street, making the left onto Johnson Avenue. Here, I'll share. Um, this is... Um, whereas Johnson Avenue and Capex Street is a three-way stop controlled intersection with visibility limitations due to hills, whereas this route is a heavily used bus route serving the BXM1, BXM2, BXM18, the BX10, the BX20, and the Hudson Rail Link, uh, whereas we have heard from community members stating that vehicles routinely fail to stop at the stop signs and that a traffic signal at this intersection would be more effective, Therefore, be it resolved that the Traffic and Transportation Committee of Community Board 8 supports the DOT proposal to study a traffic signal and improve lighting at this intersection. Um, what uh, I put forth, are there any amendments or changes that anybody on the committee would like to make? Uh, Ed, is your hand up or is it still up from before? Uh, okay, uh, David? Uh, yeah, just uh, uh, very simple. The second line, ki killed by an MTA Express bus. Any objections from anybody else on the committee? Okay. Anything else? I, I think it's uh, quite good. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, then. If, uh, if there are no other amendments to the resolution, then I, I motion that we uh, approve the resolution. Do I have anybody uh, who is opposed to the resolution? Uh, David, is your hand up from uh, from before? So sorry, but uh, MTA Express. Oh, sorry, MTA it's okay. Express. Yep. No, but it, it's a very, I think it's well-worded. Uh, so it's by a MTA Express bus. Or NMTA, NMTA. 
Yeah, technically it's ad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, uh, so is there anybody opposed to the resolution? Is there anybody abstaining? All right, then the resolution passes unanimously. Um, so make a note. And we will move on to the next item of business, um, which is our, our KPOC Palisade letter to DOT. So um, bring that up. So we uh, previously had a conversation um, at our last meeting, um, when was that, September 13th, um, where we uh, heard from the general public on uh, this, the horrendous flooding at 2727 Palisade. Um, we, as a committee, decided that we were going to respond in a letter. So this will, comes back again, I think, to um, what we were talking just now, um, uh, Ed, about uh, sending out letters. Um, I, I do think it's really important that we send a letter and that we respond um, to this, this really tragic kind of situation that's happening. Um, so I wanted to, uh, to try to put together a letter um, immediately following our September 13th meeting. However, we really weren't able to kind of pull together the language and at that meeting, we also were discussing the Deegan flooding, which you know was pretty catastrophic as well. And so we weren't able to really to wordsmith the letter live. So um, I put together a letter here um, and I wanted to, and I've sent it out to the committee. I'm happy to um, put, put it up on the screen, but I wanted to get amendments. I assume that there will be amendments from the committee about it. And so I wanted to kind of go through carefully and make any changes that the, that the committee would like to make. So do I have, um, so I wanna start from there. Um, Ed or, uh, Mary Ellen, uh, David, all the all of Chris, all of the folks on the on the committee. Um, do you have any amendments you would like to make to the letter? Uh, I'm going to start with Ed. Okay, so let me put up. I'll put it up on the screen so everybody can see it. There, there was several versions of of this letter, and I actually preferred the last one better, but, but, um, they're, oh, no, they're, really? <laughs> they're, they're all, they're all fine with the exception of to me, which is the meat and potatoes, which is the final paragraph, which deals with the, uh, the committee's recommendation. So I, I think, you know, the rest of the letter, very well written, fine. Um, but I think we need to focus on the purpose of the letter, which is our committee's recommendation. So, the way I see it, our committee has a choice. You know, we either support the request of the community members, which um, is to restore the street to its previous design, or we trust DOT to come up with an alternative solution to rectify the problem. So um, the, the part that I feel is missing in, in the last paragraph is, and, and that, you know, certain members of the committee seem reluctant to add is um, just the simple language that we urge DOT to remove the curb extension and restore the street to its previous design. So that, you know, just based on our last meeting, that was the overall, you know, the overwhelming sentiments of the uh, residents of 2727. And it, and it just feels to me that by not specifically recommending that as a committee, we are essentially telling the residents um, that this committee and DOT knows better than you what's good for your uh, building and for your neighborhood. So I, 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 the only letter that I would support from this committee would have to include that language. Um, so, um, so just to interrupt you for a second. So sure. with that last paragraph, um, is there a place, because what I would like to do is find something that we can all, you know, either mostly get behind or most of us can get 100% behind, right? And so, like in that last paragraph, is there a, is there a, a clause, is there a sentence, that is, what specifically can I add uh, that we can decide if we support um, that, that, would, um, that would get us, that you would, that you, you would support? What would you like me to add here? 
Uh, not only add, but subtract. Uh, when okay. it says, it, when it says uh, we strongly <clears throat> urge DOT to create a revised plan, I would subtract to create a revised plan because to me, it, it, um, it's, it's a simple choice. It, and it, I don't believe there is middle ground, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, it's, it's, we are either going to recommend that the, the street be reverted back to its previous design or we're not. Any, anything. So, so I'm just going to stop you. It's just so we do one thing at a time. I just want to do one thing at a time. So like with this, so you're, you're saying that on behalf of community board eight and the traffic and transportation committee, we strongly urge DOT to remove the curb extensions and restore the street to its previous design. So I'm just gonna put it in all caps so we know what the difference is. Curb extension. Do you wanna do just that or do you wanna do it's the whole thing? It's in the sentence? previous sentence. No, wait, David, we're just gonna do this one thing at a time. So it's a recommendation of the committee, not anything previously. So um, on behalf of Community Board Aid and the Traffic and Transportation Committee, we strongly urge DOT to remove the curb extension. And restore the street to its previous design. And restore the street to its previous design. And, so and I, I want to- so, I would also remove the creative revised plan part. Right, right, right. That'll, but do you want, you want them to bring it back to the committee, yes? You want them to just remove everything? I want, I want them to remove everything as, with, as is the request of the residents. So, but I think, so, okay. So, so I'm gonna now open this up to discussion just for this change. So create, uh, so we're not, we'll eliminate this part. Um, uh, how can I do strike three? Where's my strike three? Oh, there it is. So um, I wanna open up this change to the committee for a second. Um, so, uh, the, the only concern that I have, and this is, um, regarding, um, outcomes is that the, I, I, I heard the, the community talk about the removal of the curb extension. And I know that that is something that some members of the community strongly support, um, because they feel as though the, the water is being channeled directly at 27, 27 Palisade. Um, the, the only thing I would like to make sure is emphasized is the elimination of the flooding. So, um, so Ed, with this, or I mean, and just to the committee as a whole, if we uh, urge them to remove the curb extension and restore the street to its previous design, but it doesn't eliminate the flooding, um, how do we, like, how do we make, like, I, I am willing to, I have two really two asks. One is I would like to have um, pedestrian safety be preserved. And the other is I would like to make sure that the storm water is eliminated as a problem. So, um, so with removing the curve extension and restoring the street to its previous design, if we continue with which to maybe restores its street to um, just on this, this particular clause, just an amendment to the amendment, we remove the curb extension and restore the street to um, its previous design while preserving pedestrian safety. Um, would that, um, and, and integrating green infrastructure and reestablishing the most direct route to the stormwater catch basins. Ed, does that get closer to? That I think that was fine. I don't know if it's precise language because its previous design didn't include the any the green infrastructure, but I am for the green infrastructure. So I, it, it that that's fine with me. Uh, okay, Deborah, so may, may I jump in here for a moment? Um, no, Lou, we're just going to stick with the committee for uh, for a moment because we just want to get the committee in alignment. So I, that I, we realize, I realize that, the, but this is a point of order about this discussion. Okay. It's, an, 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 it's an, not a point an, of an, order. Excuse me? Well, he, we don't know what it is yet, David, because he's saying it's a point of order. So we need to at least hear what he's saying. An, am an amended meeting notice was sent out this morning at 944. It included a new agenda 
which included the, this, this particular discussion. Ample time has not been provided for the community or the residents of my building to attend tonight and have the opportunity to listen to this discussion. I feel that this discussion should be tabled to another night when it's been fully advertised. If we don't, this is exactly a repeat of what happened two years ago when inadequate notice was sent about New York City DOT's public hearing on this and all the affected buildings were never notified. And I found out about this when they started digging up the street and a lot of other people are in the same boat. And I really think this issue needs to be tabled. So, um, so Lou, just to address that concern, I don't um, think that there's anything um, that is radically different from that's being discussed at this meeting that wasn't discussed at the previous meeting when, it, the, when there was ample notice um, that the, that really the, at that meeting there were um, there were people on the committee who believed, as Ed is stating now, and and Mary Ellen and, and some others, that they felt strongly that there should be um, specific language about the curb extension. And then there were other people, um, like myself, I will admit, who have been more focused on the. Um, the pedestrian safety, just making sure that it's maintained in some way, maybe it's flexible delineators, whatever it is, just so it's easier to cross. And that, um, and that, uh, and the and the stormwater, just focusing on the, making sure that the stormwater is addressed. I don't think that there's anything new that's being stated here. We're just really just trying to finish this letter so that we can get it out in a timely fashion. I understand that, but this is not within the intent or the spirit of the open meetings law. Everybody has an opportunity to be notified and have ample time to attend. And th this is not right. People should be able to hear what you're saying and be able to comment on a letter or any other matter pertaining to this issue. Um, as I understand it, the, the, this is a public meeting that was uh, noticed correctly, according to the office, um, and that we should be able to proceed. I think what I would like to do is to at least finish with the committee work here of putting this letter together so it's together. And then if um, you have a, a complaint, then you can lodge it with the, the, the board chair, who I think she wasn't able to be on the call tonight because she had a, a personal issue. And then we will um, we can consult with her um, but, but Dad, as to Dad. regarding whether there's actually an open meetings law violation. And we can hold the meeting, we can hold the letter until next month to send out. But I would like to at least, um, try to move forward on the letter because it's already been um, a couple of weeks that we haven't sent it. And I would like to advocate for 27 and 27 Palisade um, regarding the flooding because, you know, that, I mean, I know, I know you know this, that you, this matters a great deal to you. And, um, and so it just does seem like it would be an, an important issue to, to have um, some time, that some time sensitivity to. Deb, this is, an, it is not about something new. It's about people not knowing that there was going to be a discussion tonight on this topic, which, which means a lot to people. Our safety has been affected. The entire building has been affected. It's, it's been very costly to this co-op. People have a right to be here and they did not get notice. I, okay. I, don't, think, so, so, yeah. I, don't, I don't think sending out a notice at 9.44 in the morning with an, with an amended agenda is fair. It's not okay. right. People All right, have so the right to be here. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you, Lou. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue though. Um, so I want to just try to finish this last sent, this last paragraph, if possible. Um, so on behalf of Community Board Aid and the Traffic and Transportation Committee, we strongly urge DOT to remove the curb extension and restore the street to its previous design, preserving. Just one second, David, I'll let you we hop in. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll let you know, like, I just want to finish the sentence and then we can- so, Sorry about the exhale. No, 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 it's totally fine. Um, <laughs> um, uh, preserving pedestrian safety while reducing impervious surface, integrating greens and reestablishing the most direct route to, so I think something like that. Um, uh, Mary Ellen, you were, you were next up with your hand and then David. 
Hi. Um, um, I strongly agree with Ed Green. I think it should be restored back to its original. I live there. I've crossed that street. It's been safe since I was a little kid. I still go there because my parents still live there. We've had major hurricanes there. We've had big snowstorms and we've never had flooding. Like I, I keep watching that video and I just can't b believe my eyes what I saw. Um, I think our goal of being on a committee of, of, as such is to back the community and have mm -hmm. their um, and have their back on something like this because I think I'd be losing my mind watching my building as a swimming pool, having water jumping out of my toilet and having to clean that and never mind the expense of it. And it adds on to your, um, onto your bills and everything. I just think it's outrageous. And I think strongly that we should include removing that because that wasn't there before. And it was safe to cross the street. It removes greenery, which absorbs the rain and everything. I, I, I think we need more greenery and less of less of cement and more green to preserve our community because that's what the problem is like we keep on tearing up things taking away greenery and adding more cement which there's nothing to absorb this rainwater and all this flooding so i'm totally with ed green on on his on his um language on this and i strongly agree to back up the commit the, the community at 27 27 because i think that's a total disgrace how they change the design and it, and it heads right down the hill into their building so i just think it i strongly agree that it should be restored back okay great thank you thank you mary ellen and um and then david did you have something you wanted to change yeah uh yes a couple of things here i wanted okay. to say first of all um the previous sentence uh says including total removal if necessary so i think it's been addressed in terms of the last meeting there was a very mixed sentiment uh amongst the committee members for so, and against so uh, just uh david just one thing to go back just i want to make sure i got that first comment so after the summer it is clear that the flawed design fails to adequately address stormwater and must be radically reimagined up to and including total removal if necessary. So do you, um, so, I, so can, I can eliminate that clause. So it just well, no, says bear, must be uh, radically reimagined, period. Yeah, yeah, bear, just bear with me for a minute. Sure. Because uh, I have a, a several comments that I will integrate, okay? Okay. So I'm just saying that it was in the previous sentence, so there's no need to repeat it in uh, this change. The, and the last meeting, uh, there was a very mixed sentiment amongst the committee members as to whether to go uh, uh, make uh, uh, the, the change, have this letter and make the change. And in fact, the co-op uh, board letter that you sent to us a couple of days ago, the co-op board, um, th they basically said th they were not asking for removal. What they said is we respectfully demand that the city expeditiously remedy this poorly designed an executed project. We hope and expect that the revised project will not, not only address the obvious drainage and safety problems, will, but will reduce the amount of paved and impervious services in and around the in intersections, incorporate resilient and attractive planted areas, and provide a measure of safety for uh, future modeled ra rainfall. Mm -hmm. uh, I do currently live at this intersection, so I have lived the experience of the safety issues as well as observing um, the, this dramatic rainfall a month ago, and actually a significant one last week. Um, and frankly, I have pictures I can share with uh, uh, the committee of what it was beforehand, before the construction, and this storm, the one that flooded over the major Dijon Expressway for the first time ever, this storm would have funneled the water, not to the curb, but directly into the driveway before this construction. All that water would have gone directly into their driveway and then directly into their lobby. At any rate, what I'd like to do is I have some language for the last sentence and I, I'd appreciate if you'd bear with me for this. And I think we can address all the concerns here. Okay. So uh, just listen for a moment. Mm -hmm. After this summer, and I'll repeat it to, so you can type it, but. Uh, Kindly listen to what I, I have here. After okay. this summer, it is clear that the flawed design fails to adequately address storm water and must be radically reimagined. On behalf of Community Board 8 and the TNT Committee, we strongly urge DOT to create a revised plan and bring it back to the committee. 
to the committee, period. It should, uh, uh, it should preserve pedestrian safety while reducing impervious service, uh, surface, uh, maximizing green infrastructure on the east side of Palisade Avenue and um, incorporating new stormwater catch basins on the west side of the avenue. So basically what I'm saying is green the hell out of the east side and put in catch basins on the west side. And that will address the water issues much more effectively. So David, I think the issue though is, I mean, I hear you that that is one, one solution, but yes. I think that um, to go back to what Ed said, um, the, there has been this kind of specific ask because the curb extension has been a, a sore point for years um, and that the curb extension was essentially put there to make it safer for pedestrians to cross. And, right, and, but, but the co-op so, co wrote a letter they represent 2727 and Lou Wunderluck signed that, was one of the signers of that letter. Yeah, no, I know. Okay, so I think we need to uh, recognize that as well. The, um, right, no, uh, that's the, a... there, there are a couple of individuals who spoke strongly in opposition and have because they don't like the, the dimensions of the intersection and how it uh, impedes their fast exit from their driveways. And they've been complaining about that for two years. This uh, uh, flooding issue is very, very recent, but they do not represent the community as a whole. I live here. I've spoken with dozens of people who like the uh, shorter um, crosswalks. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, and that's, I think, what we're um, trying to aim. We're trying to kind of split the, split the th thread the needle, is that the cliche that I'm looking for, of, of yeah, I th um, threading the needle would be better than splitting the baby. Yeah, splitting the baby sounds very upsetting to me. I, I, uh, I agree. I'm, I agree. Not a, I'm not a parent, but I feel like that might be that might be a, a mistake. Fully um, agree. But the removing the so calling for the removal of the curb extension and finding alternatives for making it safer for pedestrians, such as with flexible delineators or paint or something, might it, it seems like that's going to be the better middle ground. Um, for for this, I see the assemblyman's hand is the up. The community do wanna... does not support that change. On who the whole, it? there are several who radically yeah. do want it. I understand oh, that. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, okay. I, I you know I understand that. Okay, um, sorry. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, assemblyman. Thank you. Um, I, I, I see a few of the residents of the building want to speak, so I will be brief. Uh, I don't think it's always a great thing to write a letter by committee at the meeting, um, but here's what I think. I, I never supported, my internet connection is unstable. I hope everybody can hear. Um, I never supported this change. I believe that this committee made a mistake uh, a few years ago when they supported this. I think the board made a mistake and I think DOT grabbed it and I think they made a mistake. The difference is the board or many of the members realized that that wasn't the right way to go and uh, try to address it after the fact. Whereas DOT has been on this issue kind of intransigent in my opinion. Now on Friday, uh, council member Dinowitz, uh, board members, uh, Rosemary Ginty, Dan Patternick and chair of course, Laura Spalter, as well as some of the residents, uh, Lou Wunderlich, Mary Siri, and I guess others that I may have left out um, met there with Deputy DOT Commissioner. She came up to the Bronx along with uh, the Bronx Commissioner Navarro Lopez. And they presented a, like a map, a sketch of some changes that they uh, would be willing to do, but let me show you a I thought those changes were very minor and my own opinion probably wouldn't address the issue. I don't think stopping the flooding and creating better safety conditions are mutually exclusive. And I told the deputy commissioner that in front of my building, we have like what, what we would have in the past called this a safety zone. They splashed a bunch of paint there some years ago uh, so that traffic cannot uh, go like as close as it would otherwise. Uh, there, there's, there's stripes, there's uh, a safety zone in essence, and they have the bollards. 
Uh, and they've done that at a number of places. There are many ways that they could try to uh, improve safety without doing what they did. I happen to believe that they made a big mistake and it's important to, to admit a mistake and then to correct a mistake. And that's what they need to do. My belief is they should just erase what they did in essence and take it all away and start from scratch and do something uh, the right way. Uh, what the commissioner uh, proposed, I don't think does that. They take off a very little bit of the island and it, it, I don't think it'll have a significant impact. If they wanted to aim directly at High Point by building these, these, these islands or sidewalks, they couldn't have done a better job. The water is channeled directly to the building and we may not get a storm as big as I did in the near future, or we may, but there will be storms. And I think this building is going to have the same problem if changes aren't made. I think the people in the building shouldn't have to put up with it. They certainly shouldn't have to put up with the incredible expense that's involved. And uh, the, 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 the minor changes that DOT has been, propo have been proposing, including uh, slightly shaving the island, uh, a, a bile swale, it's just not going to do the job. And I don't think people have to live like this and worry that every time there's a significant storm, they're gonna go through this again. So uh, I think your letter pretty much uh, says that in so many words, because you say they should get rid of it. And that's what I think makes the most sense. I don't think you can fix this without starting all over. And uh, I know what I would do, as I said, they got plenty of paint at every other intersection in the neighborhood except this one. This is the only time I've seen DOT, and I'm not being you know, overly critical about it. I just think it's odd that normally it takes a long time to get things done with this thing. And I visited there um, a number of times as, as some of the residents know, they moved with such lightning speed like I've never seen before. And I, I wish that they would do that um, in other places where we need help. I know they're moving on, on Johnson and K-pop, for example, which is good. But here, the mistake can't be fixed, I don't believe. So I think they got to go back to square one. And that means removing that horrible uh, concrete and then figuring out how do we make things safe for the few pedestrians that cross there, but at the same time, ensuring that the people in High Point will not have to endure another um, episode like they've had to endure recently. Okay, all right, very good. Thank you uh, so much for speaking, Assemblyman. Um, and I see the, the there is a councilman that you might be familiar with who also would like to speak. Yes, I don't want to, thank you. I don't want to repeat mm -hmm. anything that was said, but just to add a few things. And one was um, the Assemblyman and I are also working on a letter uh, articulating what we said. There's a few other issues um, there. One is that the, the deputy commissioner uh, recognized was the curb is kind of broken in front of 2727. Mm -hmm. um, so rebuilding that. So if there's a few inches, you know, obviously if it's a big storm, it won't do much, but it, it would uh, block that off um, to rebuild the curb. The other concern, which I don't think was really addressed, um, but that I brought up was it was, I mean, it's pretty clear when they installed this that there was no environmental review, that they didn't consult with DEP. They had their own in-house people do it, but they, they must have done it wrong because all of the water is not getting to the sewer, the, 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 cat, the, the catch basin. So when they spoke about bioswales in this alternate plan, and I'm a big fan of green infrastructure, but when the DOT proposes putting bioswales in, um, one of the things that concerns me is that they're proposing this plan. It, it's unclear whether they've spoken with a DEP. It's, 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 it's just unclear because, again, they didn't really do it for the first one, for this, this uh, when they send the, the sidewalk. So that, that's the only additional thing that I want to say. Uh, everything else, I agree with the, the residents and first the assemblyman. But that will that will be coming out in a letter. I think we're sending that out uh, tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you for that update. Um, Mary Ellen, your hand is up. Is that up from before? Is my hand up? Oh. Um, that was a clap. There's a 
Oh, got it. Okay. I'm going to lower your hand. Then, Laura, I see you're saying if your hand is up, it, your, yes, your yeah. hand no, is my up. My hand is up. My hand. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I have been in and out. I had a family emergency Zoom. So I've been on my phone in another room and I've, I've heard a little bit. And I apologize for that. Um, my thoughts committees do write letters, it's generally faster. It's uh, it's very efficient. Every single committee on community board eight signs it. No letter goes out without it being signed by the chair of the board. However, in this instance, because this is so huge and I, I don't want process to be in the way, um, perhaps we should pivot to a resolution. Um, we certainly have all the whereases uh, because there's been so much failure and flooding and, and impacts um, that, that still leaves the TNT committee with grappling with the be it resolved and th that last paragraph. But, right. but then it would have the advantage of going through exec and of going through the full board um, because of the enormity of this. You know, that's kind of become uh, clear to me that. Um, I don't want to get hung up in, in the process of it. If we go to the old and true, um, I don't know. How does the committee feel about that? The only thing I would add, Laura, is that I don't know if you were on the call when we were discussing the letter itself, but I think we're actually very close to having an agreement. We're really just, um, David had one more amendment, uh, one kind of bit of uh, uh, oh, okay, we maybe I missed that. I have been in and out. I, I just I'm yeah. I think we're actually okay. very close. We just needed to kind of integrate David Gelman's um, comments. I mean, I can read to you where we stand, and maybe I'll come back to the committee yeah, and, really and quick Deb's and see what you what the committee thinks as far as a resolution versus the letter. I guess Ed, I see your hand is up. Do you have an opinion about this? Because he was just actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, talking about letters. There was some language at the beginning that also I thought a couple of words that I thought was unnecessary, but I, I actually agree with what Laura is saying that, um, you know, even if we do come to some type of consensus on the letter um, as a committee, I feel, you know, and moving forward with letters that, you know, we should go to the full board with matters like this. So I think, you know, first we have to come to a consensus on the letter. And then we have perhaps have to have some type of resolution stating that the letter goes before the uh, full board before uh, approval. Well, That's it. Um, yeah, I mean, my only hesitation is that if we have a consensus on the letter or very close, um, I hate to throw it out to start um, all over again on a resolution this evening. I, and I don't think that there would, we would have much buy-in to work on a resolution not live on this call. Like I think we would need to immediately Write a resolution. Well, Deb, um, you may want to read the letter for people who are on the telephone or calling in. Sure. Well, like I'm Georgia. Gonna, so, I'm yeah, well, I just Deb, as, as that. chair, I, I think that you can you use your judgment about drafting something and sharing it with the committee members. At this point, we've all seen the issues. Um, I, I agree with Laura in the idea of doing a resolution. Um, we do have an exec tomorrow where things could be refined, but I think you could draft a resolution, understanding what has been said and, and, and pass it around amongst us, hopefully before our exec tomorrow. Right, I'm not sure that's gonna, gonna happen before exec tomorrow. Um, okay, I, I, I but, imagine you're quite busy. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's the problem of employment, the, the joys and uh, troubles of, of, empl of full employment. Um, so do we wanna finish like, so why don't we integrate that? I think the, the, the be it resolved is gonna be very much like our last paragraph. So why don't we finish the last paragraph so that then we can essentially use that as a proxy for the be it, therefore be it resolved. Um, and we'll, I'll just remove some of the, the clauses and such. So- um, Would you like share. me to repeat my uh, version? Let me, let me share the screen again. There okay. um, we go. So, if we're gonna do this as a resolution, let me just pull the, this is kind of the, what we're talking about here. I'm just gonna come down. Uh, this will be it resolved. Uh, 
uh, that the floor design fails to adequately. Yeah, uh, Deb, I, my, my, yeah, okay. Uh, the must be radically reimagined part I would remove. Why? Because that gives DOT an opening to do whatever they want to do rather than uh, what the resident requests. It's but the, it resi is. the resident request is mixed. Well, I think that the only mix though, David, is to, we want to make sure to preserve pedestrian safety. And so we can get away from- No, they, yeah. they, the, the co-op board mentions nothing about removal. They talk about reimagining. Right, but that in order to find a kind of a middle ground of all of the various people, uh, I mean, removal of- I strongly heard them saying they want it removed. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that I believe uh, that very strongly they, that they Re reduce the that. amount of paved and impervious surfaces that mm -hmm. I agreed to. So while so so wait so can, can, go back, can, the, the, David, just one second, let me just read it out loud, and we can get to the on behalf of Community Board Aid and the Traffic and Transportation Committee, we strongly urge DOT to remove the curb extension and restore the street to its previous design preserving pedestrian safety while reducing impervious surface, integrating green infrastructure and reestablishing the most direct route to the stormwater catch basins. And then David, you had something that you were, um, that was similar-ish. Right, well, uh, let, let me re, uh, repeat it, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. Yeah. Uh, after the summer, and, and yes, we'll put in the, there be resolved. Uh, after the summer, it is clear that the flawed design fails to adequately address stormwater and must be radically reimagined. On behalf of CB8 and the TNT, we strongly urge DOT to create a revised plan and bring it back to the committee. It should preserve pedestrian safety while reducing impervious surface, maximizing green infrastructure wait, wait, on wait, the wait, east side wait, of wait, Palisade wait, Avenue. Wait, stop for a second. <coughs> yes. Let me add it. Maximizing green infrastructure, you said? Yes, on the east side of Palisade Avenue, the two corners there on the east side of Palisade Avenue and incorporating new stormwater catch basins on the west side of the avenue. But um, I, I worry about being too specific with what we ask for when really we want the stormwater to stop running into the building. Like that they need to figure out where the catch basin should go, um, you know, that that that's okay really then their, that's just really incorporating new stormwater catch basins period as uh, maybe as needed uh, that's fine that's fine okay so wait, so in, so it's instead of reestablishing, oh, right and that? incorporating right. Um, new stormwater catch basins uh as needed catch basins that's that sounds quite good as needed um ed and mary ellen are you okay with that I, I don't know what the uh, co-op members feel about that. I mean, we're, go, we're going into a whole new territory here. The co-op members didn't, that's I mean, what uh, their letter so, says. So, the the co-op members like which are on there now, they were very strong on removing. I mean, the woman was practically in tears. No. Yeah. Excuse me, David, I'm speaking. Yes, you're right. You're right. I apologize. You keep doing that to me. That's very rude. I they apologize, were, Mary Ellen. So they, I'm sorry, I can't, uh, I can't see yeah, you. Can I, can I continue there? Because they yeah, no, absolutely. Back I can't. to school learn manners. They, um, they were very specific and very strong on removing those. I lived there before David lived there. I've crossed those streets as a young kid, never got hit. It, it was always safe. And we had tremendous storms there, hurricanes. That was so bad we were putting X's on those big lobby windows and everything big snowstorms we've never had we've never had the flooding that we've seen go directly into those people's building i mean i would have a heart attack seeing water come out of my toilet water uh, five feet of water in my lobby that's crazy it needs to be rectified it needs to be removed that oh, wasn't there before uh, just to interrupt uh, you for one, just, to that, no, uh, no, wait, excuse one, me, guys, wait, just, i'm just, not finished 
Oh, Maryland, sorry, I apologize. I, wanna, I, apologize. Maryland, I'm sorry, I, wanna, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, so you were, were you're talking about the um, the portion of the be it resolved about removing the curb extension, and I don't think that that's what we're talking about right now. I think where um, Ed was um, raising the point that we were bringing up something additional was the part where David added um, maximizing green infrastructure on the east side of Palisade instead of just simply saying integrating green infrastructure, which is essentially what um, it's kind of a, it's a little bit broader and it was a little bit more in alignment with what the well, co-op board yeah, said. That's correct. Yeah, that's I'm, correct. I'm still speaking, David. She's asking me the question. Thank you. You spoke. That was Ed. That was, Ed. Sorry, I'm man. sorry, Ed. <laughs> um, when you, when I, I think it's, yes, you're, you're, you're right on that. It should be not specific because then, right, we're opening up a can of worms for them yeah. to put where they want to put or instead of with a safety part, because when we, you did allow them to do it before, they did the wrong thing. So it's 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 it needs to be that they were rest, rest, restored by getting rid of the sidewalk and making it so they don't get directly hit with that water again. Because if it's left like that and there's no greenery, it's gonna happen again. And it, I mean, that's a big expense to keep going through. I mean, I'd be quite disturbed that that was me and my, my parents still live next door. That's absolutely crazy. So, um, uh, David, you wanted to respond? Yes, a couple of things. Uh, yes, I live in her parents' building, have been for the last 22 years. And as far as I recall, uh, Mary Ellen, you have been here that. at all in that period. Uh, so I have actually much more recent experience with the conditions on these corners than you do by decades. Um, now, so. you're, you are right. Excuse me. You are right that there have been many hurricanes over the years. And it, as Deb pointed out last month, Hurricane Sandy was a windstorm. The hurricane. Um, it, was a, it was a storm Elsa, surge. Uh, I'm sorry. You're right. A storm surge. Um, but Hurricane uh, uh, Ida was a rainstorm that uh, flooded um, the uh, uh, Major Deegan uh, for the first time ever. So this was a dramatic amount of water. And actually in the budget consultations that we had with DEP on Monday, they pointed out that their drain, their, their sewer systems are designed for one to uh, one and three quarter inches of water, of rainwater in an hour. There's three inches of rain in an hour. That's why the Deegan flooded five feet. That's why there was such a dramatic, unprecedented problem here on Capuc and Palisade. I am not trying to ignore the concerns of the folks at 2727, but they do have a submerged lobby. They uh, do have some curb issues. What I'm trying to do is never had improve, that I'm so trying to improve the green infrastructure on the east side to absorb some of the water, create more catch basins on the uh, west side of the, of the street. And I would uh, reiterate that while there are several of the residents of 27, 7, 27 who, are, uh, who want it torn out, their representatives, their board of directors wrote a letter which said nothing whatsoever about ripping out the east side of Palisade Avenue. So I think that's a greater representation and I can get more representatives from this uh, immediate community in which I live that uh, would be opposed to making a change uh, to uh, the intersection of that sort of ripping out all of the uh, um, infrastructure. So David- I don't understand why you're telling me- Mary, Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen, stop, wait, wait, one moment. I, I just wanna, I wanna, I have a floor for a second. I just wanna ask David a follow-up sure. question, sure. which is on, um, back to just the point about integrating green infrastructure. Um, I, I'm reminded that um, by your by your pointing out the east side of Palisade Avenue that um, Council Member Denowitz mentioned rebuilding of the curb, which we have not included here. Um, and, and that would that um, make sense that if we that to include rebuilding of the curb, that's, I guess that's on the west, the west side of Palisade Avenue. Right? Yeah, that, that's what I was getting at with incorporating new stormwater catch basins. And that probably would include uh, uh, figuring out what to do with the curb. But it also, frankly, um, I think that uh, some of these folks are going to be disappointed. When that happens, the driveway is going to have to be raised, and that's going to make it less pleasant to leave the driveway. 
which is where their original concern came two years ago. The, the rebuilding of the existing curb? Uh, no, it's actually the driveway because the driveway is going to be a funnel. If the, if the driveway is not raised significantly, uh, the driveway and the sidewalk there, uh, it's going to be a significant funnel of the water uh, into their driveway. I, I'm sorry, the, the driveway curb cut. The driveway curb cut and the sidewalk are not raised significantly. Uh, it will be a funnel for the water to go into the um, curb cut, uh, across the sidewalk, down their driveway, and back to their lobby. So that's why they believe they're asking for the curb to be removed and to have other pedestrian treatments applied is that they they want to um, sprawl the water. Um, yeah, no, I that's agree. Their, and, that's, and I think, their the operating curb, theory. The curb does need to get changed, but the, the, the driveway curb cut will ha also have to be changed. And they're probably, and I'm not an engineer, but there probably will be a need for uh, storm drains uh, adjacent right at the curb and driveway. So does it make sense then to add to this um, in terms of our asks um, to remove the curb extension and restore the street to its previous design, preserving pedestrian safety while reducing impervious surface, integrating green infrastructure, rebuilding the curb on the west side of Palisade Avenue, protecting the driveway, uh, some sort of something to about um, uh, uh, providing some protection for the the um, um, what's the what's the word um, or just we could just or or and or just uh, and directing all stormwater to the catch basins. The, the, that part is fine, but the the first part is, is incorrect. The remove the curb extension. Uh, the the co-op board does not want it. My neighbors do want do not want it, and I don't think the DOT wants it because it's not a good idea for the safety of the shortened uh, crosswalks. So um, just to go back to the committee then for a second, the, is that the only? Um, so David, that, that's the only sentence that you're opposed to is remove the curb extension and restore the street to its previous design. Uh, essentially, yes. And is there, I mean, obviously the, there are several folks on the committee who won't approve a letter that doesn't have something that says that. Um, is there some, is there um, some middle ground, I mean, that you can find um, where you would accept the removal of the curb extension? I mean, it's just an ask in any way, but to accept the removal of the curb extension um, partially or well, something uh, like this. Um, uh, l l let me try again and say on behalf of the CB8 and TNT, we strongly alert COT to create a revised plan and bring it back to the committee and it should preserve pedestrian safety while reducing impervious surface, uh, maximizing green infrastructure uh, and the, the stormwater catch basins. So, what, so they, what if it was a, a, to, to, to create a plan that involved removing the, ex the extension and restoring the street to its previous design. Because I think what Ed said earlier was that um, he was leery about any plan because plans tend to become reality. DOT's already made one plan that we heard Assemblyman Dinowitz uh, earlier speak of how it was inadequate. Um, so the, 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 the plan that seems as like it's going to be an iterative process, right? Okay. So um, I, I would like them to come back to the committee myself, just so that um, there's some formal process of approval and that the board has an opportunity to weigh in on it. Um, Ed, would you be, uh, would, would you find that acceptable to, re to request that they come back to the committee? They meaning DOT? Yeah. Uh, with whatever their plan is gonna be? To, yeah, to remove the curb extension and restore the street to its previous design, preserving pedestrian safety while reducing, you know, these things and bring I, it back I, to the I committee. Would, I would, Deb, it would hold them account, uh, somewhat accountable anyway for what it's worth. Right. I, I would agree with that without the remove the curb extension. Let, let them come up with a plan, come back to us, and then we can discuss whether it, it meets the concerns. Again, the community is not uh, uh, opposed to uh, the curb extensions. Certain, certain members are, and I understand that, but the community is not, their co-op board is not. I, Deb, can I 
Oh, yes. Oh, Mary I, Ellen. Okay, since he's like saying he has, he has all these people to back him up, like we're in a gang fight here, I see plenty of hands up that are from that building that totally agree with me that that needs to be taken out. It's a disaster. I mean, even the even the council member, the assemblyman, he, they all agree with me. And you know what? I, I lived there way before David did. I, I know the difference. I know I've been there for years. Kevin, excuse me, David. I am speaking. I apologize. I'm yeah, sorry. You keep apologizing, sorry. but you know, put yourself on mute for a second while I'm speaking. Thank you. I apologize, Mary Ellen. You're spending more time. Complaining. Excuse me. You spent a lot of time talking on your opinion, and I'm speaking now. Thank yes, you. You're right, and, and you I'm deserve speaking the now. opportunity can you, can, to speak. Can, can you please mute David so I can talk now? Thanks. I, I have. I see plenty of hands here that says to take it away. So I've Mary Ellen, just, a, I just I, I, to, he's got to speak, Deb. Yeah, no, he, I know. I'm just, I'm not. Going I just on wanna... and on and on how he's bringing all his members to, to come tell us that what, what they're going to do. Well, but I wanted I'm to point out that we aren't disagree. We aren't disagreeing with you. That was all I wanted to point I out. I understand that. But you know what? He keeps jumping in when I'm trying to speak. There are, there are people from that building that totally agree with uh, what, what I'm saying. That, that was never there before. I've lived there way before David was there. I still go back there all the time to help take care of my parents. I know exactly what that is. I spoke to the people in that building. I know a lot of people. I'm still friendly with them. I'm friendly with people that live in 2727. I was director of community theater. I know people that, that I know directed their kids. Uh, they totally want that out of there. I mean, I, I heard in the last meeting that they totally want that out of there. It, it's making their building a swimming pool. I would not want that expense on top of my corp if I live in that building doing the backstroke. It's ridiculous. So it needs so, to be taken back. They should I, leave they should leave that in the letter and let DOT come back with their information, but leaving this in there because they strongly uh, wanted this added did it, they didn't want that built in the first place and they went and did it anyway. So we need to strongly put it back to them that they don't want it there. We're here for, at the end of the day, we're here for the community. So not the egos. We're here for the community. So I, I thank thank you, Mary Ellen. So I want to just um, I want to pull the committee back together for a moment. Um, and uh, is there is there as this is we uh, obviously we're having to do this as a resolution. So the, the therefore be it resolved that the um, that the flawed design fails to adequately address stormwater. Um, I'm going to remove and must be radically reimagined just because that seems more like the stuff of letters than, than resolutions. Um, on behalf of Community Board 8 and the Traffic and Transportation Committee, we strongly urge DOT to remove the curb extension and restore the street to its previous design, preserving pedestrian safety while reducing impervious surface. Um, in uh, integrating green infrastructure and rebuilding the curb on the west side of Palisade Avenue, Wait. rebuilding the curb on the west side of Palisade Avenue and incorporating new stormwater catch basins as needed and to bring their plan back to the committee. Um, is, is, does uh, Mary Ellen, David, uh, Ed, are we, do we have any amendments or changes to this? Yes. Uh I'm actually fine with it, Deb. My my only question that I I wasn't unsure was that I was a little unsure about in my head was the um, rebuilding of the curb on the west side. But at, after hearing um, the councilman and the assemblyman um, backing that up, I would assume that that's the uh, the wishes of the uh, the, of the the people at twenty seven twenty seven to have that done. So I'm fine with this. Okay, Mary Ellen, are you I'm fine with, fine with it too. Well, that was that, Mar Margaret. Yeah. Yes, I am okay. fine with the resolution. Excellent. And then um, uh, of the other, we have some newer newer committee members on the on the call. Kelly or Chris, do you have any um, any concerns? I don't. Uh, are we ready to call a vote on this? Uh, no. Um, well, do I uh, do I have a second? Do I have a, do I have a second who who would like to call the vote? I'd like to call a vote. I'd like to call okay. a vote. Grace. I would too. So, um, so David, I'm going to call a, a call a vote on this. Deb, Deb, I I already objected to calling a vote beforehand. I Anybody, have a change to make. Do you have a? Is the change anything other than removing the curb extension portion? Nope. It's just that, right? 
That's right. Yeah, that's why I think we need we're, we're going to call the vote and we have a second. So um, so I would like to uh, put forth that uh, this be the, the resolution that therefore be it resolved for this um, for this uh, resolution. Um, are there any in, uh, opposed? Please. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to take it off share just so I can see hands. Does anybody want me to read it one last time before I take it off share? Okay. Um, so, everybody drop their hands. Yeah, would everybody mind dropping your hand so I can take a vote on this? If you, or I, I can also, if it, I can lose your, I'm gonna lower your hand. Uh, if, I'm, I'm, if I'm touching your electronic hand, it is only so we can take a vote. Um, uh, Laura, did you wanna speak or was your uh, hand up from before? Mm -hmm. I, I no, want to congratulate you. No, no, no. My hand, my I, I wanted to congratulate you on taking a vote. And I wanted well, to well, say let's that, take it, let's take the vote. Wait, 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 wait. There's can... one there's one change. <laughs> it's it's only on behalf of the TNT committee at this juncture in the resolution, not community oh. board A. You'd Good have to chance. just take that out. Yep. Fair point. Okay. Good point. Fair point. So on behalf of the traffic and transportation <clears throat> committee. Okay. Anything else, Laura? You could do a roll call, it might be faster too. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see here. Right, I got, I got all these new committee members, Laura. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go through. Um, I, am a, I am a yay, I am a yes. Um, so all of those in favor, I will go through um, uh, person by person. Um, a yes is in favor of the this, uh, be it resolved. Um, Kelly Buford. Are you in favor of this uh, be it resolved? No. You're opposed? Yes. Okay. Um, Chris? Yes. Uh, David? No. Uh, Georgia? Georgia Santiago? Uh, Mary Ellen Gibbs? Yes. Uh, Margaret. Yes. And Ed. Yes. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five in favor, two opposed, and uh, Georgia is absent. Georgia is not is not there. She was on the call. She, she was, was on the before. Call. She had a a, a, a dental appointment. A, a, obviously, a late dental appointment. I think I thought that was earlier, but um, she said that. Uh, yeah, she might get pulled. So maybe she's just not on at this exact moment. Did you so call Osvaldo? Uh, Osvaldo is not on the call, I don't believe. Is, oh. is, is Osvaldo, has he, has he joined? Yeah, he's not on the call. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no problem. Um, okay, so uh, this, uh, this, is pa this is passed as, a, as our therefore be it resolved. And then I will put together the the rest of the resolution for the exact tomorrow. Um, it is almost nine o'clock, so I do want to move on to the next um, the next big issue, which was um, Sedgwick Avenue safety improvements. I know it's quite late, and so, but I want I thought what maybe what would be helpful is at least just to do a real quick refresher, um, so that then I can put some language together for a resolution for the next meeting, if that makes some sense. Um, Ed, David, does that, uh, does that make sense to you? Ted. That's yeah, I believe so. Yeah. That's so, fine. Okay, great. So, cause I, I, I know Nat Solomon is on the call. Um, Nat, thank you for sticking with us. I know you've been, you've been fighting passionately for these Cedric safety improvements for a while. So I appreciate you, you, uh, hanging on the call. Um, so I wanted to, back in June, we, um, we had a, a conversation about uh, Sedgwick Avenue, specifically the intersection of Van Cortlandt Avenue West going uh, essentially to Stevenson. Um, so the, out of that, there were some very specific suggestions. And so I wanted to see kind of where, like basically where we landed on, on which ones are we still actively considering and that we would want to include um, in a proposal to uh, DOT. So the, the, it, it, the proposed changes, one was a study of the Cedric Avenue intersection at Van Cortland Avenue West to address pedestrian safety due to poor sight lines by turning vehicles 
and vehicles rushing to turn due to oncoming traffic on the Van Cortlandt Avenue West crossing and the Southern Sedgwick Avenue crossing. So if you're on Sedgwick Avenue on the south side of the intersection and you're taking that left to go onto Van Cortlandt Avenue West, that the cars were often rushed because of conflicts with the oncoming traffic. So I think we were looking at basically a traffic uh, study of the intersection, a, tr a study of um, the traffic light signals at that intersection, um, a restoration of the flashing yellow that used to be on Sedgwick Avenue between Van Cortlandt Avenue West and Stevenson. Um, hearing some background noise, but don't know where it's coming from. I'll see. Um, Um, a restoration of the pedestrian countdown timer. And I believe that was one thing that you called out. Um, speed camera was mentioned. Um, a speed camera study on Cedric Avenue between Giles Place and Stevenson. Um, and that's the traffic light, that's the traffic study. Oh, and then, um, and then the uh, either an enhanced crosswalk or traffic light at Stevenson and Sedgwick. Um, that's a, a turning, uh, it's a, a T where there's very poor visibility because of uh, the curbs of the hills on both directions. Um, and we've actually received since our last meeting, um, another call from a resident requesting a traffic light at that intersection. Um, and Sophia wasn't able to come on the call tonight. Um, and then uh, finally, I did get another, I got an email also from uh, a, a resident pr uh, proposing share rows while we were on the topic of, of Sedgwick Avenue. Nothing that would affect parking, but just simply because we have so many bicyclists on Sedgwick that it would be nice to um, provide that additional level of um, safety. So is there anybody on the committee who um, thinks that any of these suggestions should just be removed from the list immediately um, or wants to kind of put them in order or em emphasize one thing or another. I want to make sure I'm capturing how people remember it and and which things we want to emphasize. Uh, Ed, anything? I got nothing, Deb. Is there anything you're opposed to? I it's, there's all of these things, they're essentially, they're essentially what we would ask for for safety? Um, I have no opposition at this time. Okay. Uh, Mary Ellen? I have no opposition this time. Okay. Uh, David? I'm, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find that list. I, it, do you want me to share it? Yeah, if you don't yes. mind, please. <laughs> um, let's see. There you go. I'll remove the resident's name. So it was the, these are essentially same, a dedicated left turn lane <coughs> for northbound vehicles turning left. And just that, the, that those vehicles get rushed and that that's where, this is an intersection where someone um, was hit by a car and killed. Um, I do have the, I looked up the, crash data from 2016 to now. And um, we've had the, the one pedestrian fatality. We've had two cyclist injuries, um, one between Stevenson and Stevenson, which is that kind of curly uphill area. And then one between Stevenson and 238, which is the next block. Uh, we've had six pedestrian injuries. We've had 32 motorist injuries, um, 10 at Van Cortlandt Avenue West and Sedgwick, five mid block between Stevenson and 238 four at 238 at the intersection of 238 um, and then six at the intersection of Giles. And then there've been 70 crashes with no injuries kind of throughout, mostly, you know, fender benders and things like that. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to understand the context. I mean, this, this is a good list. Uh, I'm just trying to understand the context. Are you thinking in terms of um, capital budget requests, uh, a letter, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I lost you somewhere along the line as to the context. So I think that, so um, Nat Solomon has come forth in front of this committee the, to request these changes. Um, uh -huh. Specifically um, the studies 
um, and you know the and the intersections. I think that we were going to raise them as safety concerns because of the danger to pedestrians crossing at Van Cortlandt Avenue West. Because yeah, yeah, of the, yeah. And so it was really going to be a resolution. Um, and what I wanted to do is to come back to the committee since this had been on hold over the summer, um, and just make sure that it was clear. Um, just to, what the focus was of the resolution. And then I can go back and make a draft of the resolution. And then at our next meeting, we can kind of finalize the resolution. Ah, okay, now I see. Okay, sounds good. So is there anything on here that, the, that seems like a non-starter or where you'd want to have more debate or discussion about? Yeah, Deb, I think, I think we, we went over this pretty thoroughly the last time. I, I yeah. have no problems with it, and, I, and, and I'm very familiar with the area. And uh, I think the only thing we got rid of was the no honking sign or something. But other than that, everything, <laughs> every, everything, is, uh, everything is good to go as far as I'm concerned. OK, yeah, great. I remember that. Yeah, the no honking. Um, and then, Nat, does this represent what you, what you remember? All right, Nat, do you need me to unmute you? Or I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you just to. Uh, do you need uh, do you need help? Or are you good? Here we go. Unmute. Okay. Yes. The the presentations were uh, as as hoped for. Uh, one minor correction, very very minor. Stevenson Place. The spelling. It's are like Stevenson. It right. S T E V V E N. S O N. But everything else is perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, Well, Certainly. And then I see that there are some hands up. Um, is that for, so 917-669-2677? Uh, seven, seven? Is, that, is that Margaret? I think so. Uh, Margaret, are you, is that you voting? Um, Mary Seri, are you commenting on Cedric Avenue? Are your hands still up from before? Uh, sorry, it's up from before. Okay, yeah, no, no, no problem. Uh, Miriam, Miriam Gomez, is, is your hand also up from before? And Atara, are your hands up from before? No, I would like to speak. Okay, great. Um, you have the floor. So, first of all, I would like to echo our board member, Lou Wunderling, in saying that while you're all deciding our future and what's going to be with 2727 Palisades, most of us didn't even know about this meeting. I doubt that we have half a dozen members of our residents of our building. That's number one. Number two, I would like to thank uh, the Dinowitzes for articulating what I think is our feelings about what transpired in this uh, intersection. And last, I would like to impress upon you that your very heavy wordedly and sometimes re repetitive letter does not address the urgency of the season. We're heading into rain season and all, your letter does not address that at all. But most of all, consider that you are discussing while, you, while one of you is playing engineer and architect with our driveway and so on and so forth, you are not really allowing us to participate in what is our future. So reconsider that and perhaps hold off on that letter. Okay, thank you uh, for, your, for your feedback on that. Uh, we had a, a public uh, discussion last month at the previous meeting um, where I think a lot of these sentiments of like uh, uh, around the issue were expressed, but I appreciate you um, coming to this meeting as well. Um, Rose, Rosemary, are you? Is your hand up for the Cedric Avenue? Yes, yes, yes. Just, um, um, I, I guess, um, I think my question was answered. That this has been uh, discussed previously, or the elements of the list were discussed previously. But you're coming to a resolution that you're going to bring up at the next committee meeting, if I understand what you said. I think that's the appropriate way to go. I want to make a suggestion. Mm -hmm. After the uh, fiasco of Cape Breck, um, uh Palisade, 
and the um, uh, what I acknowledged as then chair of the board as uh, not full um, um, advertising of these issues for the community. Uh, there were four separate ways to involve the community and tell them what is going on. This, the Cedric Avenue resolution is quite extensive. I applaud Mr. Sullivan, Ms. Solomon for coming up with the list, but I would suggest between now and your next meeting, you talk to Kira. There are four ways to engage the community significantly, and I think it should be done for an issue this extensive. Uh, so it's, it's in the nature of a suggestion, um, a friendly suggestion, okay? Sure. Thank you. No, no I appreciate it. Um, and we did um, also just reach out to FIPNA as well and to anybody who had reached out to us during the, the summer regarding Cedric Avenue. Um, but, I, you know, obviously it's good to have more. Um, uh, Dan, did you have a question regarding Cedric Avenue? Or a statement? Where's your hand up from before? No, so, you know, it's related to Cedric, but I guess it's also, you know, kind of related to, to KPOC and, and that's this. While you had a discussion last month and you heard many of the things, you know, I know on this agenda, and what we did last year was put the specific items on the agenda of what the changes were so folks could see what was coming up. I think what's missing on some of these important topics, especially when you're going to have changes, is the ability for the public to actually comment on what the resolution is and what the committee members are voting on. So that way, the members, before they cast their vote, can actually hear what the public is saying about some of these resolutions. Now, I'll come back to it later in outstanding business. I don't want to deter too much from Sedgwick Avenue right now. Okay, so um, I'm gonna wrap the Sedgwick Avenue up just in the interest of time since it's, it's, nine, it's 10 after nine. Um, and then we'll come back, I'll come back to the group next month with a, a resolution for this. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, do under old business was just an update on Independence Avenue. So um, Independence Avenue, we it, back in April, the board did a resolution um, requesting flexible delineators at uh, several intersections. And so I wanted to bring this back to the committee because I had a conversation with um, DOT regarding this and that um, is part of the process after the resolution they um, wanted very sp uh, specifically to know what they should be studying at e each intersection. And as you remember from um, the Independence Avenue discussion, the main concern was really uh, cars doing donuts in the middle of the intersection. And this is what I explained to the uh, to DOT. Um, but they don't, you know, according to 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 DOT, they don't have specific treatments for those types of things, that it would have to be requesting um, a, a pedestrian safety um, issue at each of these intersections. And so um, with uh, KPOC Palisade kind of in mind, but also just with an understanding of how the discussion had gone at uh, when we were talking about Independence Avenue, um, you know, I, 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 as much as anybody, did a lot of a lot of work to try to find consensus um, on these on the intersections and the exact placement of each of these flexible delineators. And so it was with enormous amount of frustration and sadness to hear that um, DOT um, that there was no place within their process for us to give them our ideas of where we wanted flexible delineators placed and to have that be given um, priority. But it was clear that if we said to them, these are the intersections where we would like pedestrian studies, that it, we would, could easily end up with curb extensions and things like that. I personally don't, you know, I think curb extensions save lives. And I think that that would be kind of a, a big help um, for many people who live on Independence Avenue. But that said, lots of folks who came to those Independence Avenue meetings, I know would not want those curb extensions. And that is not what we said we would do. And so... Um, I, w I wanted to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking, I, I would like to move to repeal the resolution on the existing resolution requesting flexible delineators on Independence Avenue to address drag racing. Um, I think that if we want to approach Independence Avenue again, we sh with uh, specific intersections in mind for sidewalks, um, for pedestrian safety, we should do that. But that um, I think that the existing outstanding 
resolution that we have um, is uh, for flexible delineators, and that's what the public would be expecting, and that we have no way, if we submit this to DOT, of, of guaranteeing that that's the extent it would be. So I wanted to bring this back to the committee, be really transparent about this, and find out um, if you support the repeal of the resolution, or if you would like me to continue to move forward with the resolution as is. It's been approved by the board, um, and the next steps would be to you know to pers to you know outline it with DOT, so that they could log it and then they would study it. But they would be studying all of these intersections where we have been proposing flexible delineators. Um, I'm going to start with the committee on this. Uh, Ed, your hand is up. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to hear a little bit more on it, but my initial um, inclination is to 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 go with repealing the resolution just because of some of the things we've heard tonight of how DOT basically just unilaterally does whatever it wants when presented with any type of information and, uh, on any any of these instances. So we, we don't know if that's what's going to be done. We, we there might be something far more extensive done. So just based on that alone, I would I would agree with the. Uh, repealing the uh, the resolution, but I'd like to hear what some of our other members have to say about this matter. Uh, David Gelman, I believe you're also, you, you got your hand up? Uh, yeah, um, no, I, I think we should move forward. We, uh, we as committee said, this is what we recommend. Um, we agreed to that. And, um, you know, I think we should uh, hold the DOT's feet to the fire to, to make sure they do what we uh, requested. Uh, but we recommended them these changes on Independence Avenue because of the grievous concern of uh, uh, potential horrible incidents on uh, Independence Avenue. So I think we should proceed. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, in terms of, I'm going to open it up to the rest of the community. Um, Vittorio, do you have something you'd like to say? Yeah, my, my comment is with regard to Independence Avenue, but it's actually south of uh, 232. And it's my understanding that it was supposed to be repaved in that area around 231st and Independence, and that has not occurred. So I would ask that, um, I believe that was on the schedule of DOT for repaving. I would ask that that be looked at again if possible. Thanks. Uh, between 231st and 232nd? That's correct. Yeah, there's, there's some major sinkholes there uh, along the Independence Avenue. Okay. If you um, can reach out to the office, we can get back to you on what the status is on that. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, totally. Um, Rosemary Ginty, is your hand up for this? Yes, yes, it is. My goodness. When you talk about Independence Avenue, my ears go up. Um, I know. Uh, no, everybody will remember that over 255 people showed up for, the, uh, for, for discussion and testimony on this issue. Uh, I do not understand what rescinding a resolution means, okay? I do not understand what it means. What are the unintended consequences of rescinding it? I, I do not think it is, one, one can be um, casual about rescinding a resolution that was passed. It may be appropriate, may not be, but I will tell you, Hundreds of people on this street are going to want to understand what are the consequences of rescinding a resolution that was passed. Therefore, uh, I urge you, I urge you to, again, this is a theme tonight, the people in the community need to be heard on these issues, and we have a responsibility on the community board to explain what is in front of the committees for consideration. That is our obligation. Uh, so I am very, very strong on this. Do not rescind anything until it is understood and the people in the community understand it. Thank you. Um, Eric, Colin. Uh, you're muted. Are you speaking? No, I am. Sorry. <laughs> um, I disagree with Rosemary. Um, hearing what you're saying, if I'm interpreting this right, we thought out and, and you heard from the community and you, you basically want to present something that you're not, it's almost like you're saying they're opening up a can of worms or a Pandora's box. Um, you don't, we don't know what we're gonna get. Like in other words, you're coming out with a plan but you have no idea what that's gonna lead to. Am I interpreting what you're saying right? right. With that in mind, 
questions. Right. Um, please rescind, uh, because we don't need worse problems than we have from people outside the community that don't understand our needs. If we find that we're getting more cooperation from them in the future, it could be brought up again. But I think you're, you're doing um, really good planning by seeing what's ahead and seeing this, the, that I'll use the word potholes that we're gonna run into once they open this up. And I do use the word Pandora's box as a metaphor, but it seems to be the appropriate one. So I think you're doing the right thing and I support it. That's great, thank you. Uh, Michael? Yeah, I guess I'd like to just ask as a point of reference again, can you remind everyone, Deb, what the, I mean, I, I'm editorializing here, totally watered down resolution was, um, you know, I, I, which is I think what you're getting at, right? Which is we wanted to try and address it. What's left in the resolution is pretty thin and vague and seemingly kind of doesn't match the kind of criteria or protocols by which DOT responds to these requests. And so therefore, because of other things that people have raised, um, it, would it be safer to rescind it um, than kind of ask for something and get something else? So could you just remind us exactly word for word what the resolution that's still out there actually asks for? Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Um... And then I have a, after you share that, I do have one other point to make. Yeah, absolutely. Ed, is your hand up for um, for this, or is, your, is it locked up? Sorry, Deb, I'm locked in here. I'll, I'll lower it. No, it's really fine. Sorry, Deb. I, I feel bad. Yeah. I thought you may. I thought you may have had it handy only because. <laughs> well, it's only handy. You know, uh, nothing's ever handy after nine o'clock when you're trying. To find <laughs> fair it. enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, um, and I'm and I'm totally fine to bring this back to. I mean, it, it is a point well taken that um, that the larger community might want to uh, to to ring in on on this issue. I um, thought that it would be fine to at least introduce it under old business just to, to test my own instincts about um, what, pan I mean, I think Pandora's box is a really good phrase that it, it um, that after all of the work of, of being really uh, diligent, working really carefully with the committee and with the community on what was going to be done, um, you know, and it's every single intersection on Independence Avenue um, has some request. And so in order to uh, even request the delineators, we would need to state that there is a pedestrian safety concern there. And that I don't uh, believe that when we were having the conversations with the community that there was unilateral support for pedestrian safety treatments um, outweigh uh, of any uh, like more than than what we did. So, um, you know, like for example, I think Sedgwick Avenue is a good example. Like Sedgwick Avenue and Van Cortland Avenue West, there is a concern because cars are turning quickly and they can't actually see the pedestrians and we've had a pedestrian killed. And so I think that we feel much more comfortable saying, you know, that we need sidewalk extensions, we need safety uh, pieces installed, that there's more um, unanimous consent around that. Right, but um, that right. They, but they, and, and, and which is not to say that we can't go back and pick individual in, intersections if we feel as though there's individual intersections at Independence Avenue. Come back and say, this is. Let's have a conversation about whether it is worth it to tell the tell DOT that there is a safety concern here that we would like them to study, and that they may these are the types of treatments that they will come back with for that intersection. I think that that's 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 perfectly. Um, something that's perfectly like a, a legitimate idea as a next step is to say, okay, of these intersections where we identified flexible delineators as something that would improve um, that intersection, um, are there any there where we feel as though we would want to raise it to the committee uh, as that, just that intersection 
and then talk to the community at large about just that intersection and say, is this the level of concern high enough that we would um, be comfortable with anything the DOT wanted to put there once they decided that yeah, they, me, it was needed? Right. So let me, I'll just, just say really briefly that I guess I think it is helpful to understand if there was a resolution that, and maybe I was being overly harsh before, totally watered down. I mean, I, I felt that way about because at one point I recall we were like picking, you know, I believe in front of the um, uh, at two thirty seventh maybe we were like, you know, selecting should there be three delineators matching the paint or two, so that way we can allow you know double parking in front of the the, the synagogue there and or you know th these other treatment. And it's just like you know, are, are we gonna if we're gonna do something or we're not gonna do something? So if there's a resolution on the table. I don't know what the, the, the status is to move forward on it, but I, I think as I made my point earlier, let's be active about these things as opposed to reactive because we might say, oh, well, we don't really think there's an issue at independence and, and any of these cross streets. Although we did because that's why the whole group was convened, right? It had gone from speeding when the, they milled and paved and didn't have the speed humps in and didn't have the markings in and it was essentially felt like a runway. And then they put in the, the, the speed humps again and, and the, the markings contract came through and they, they went out and put down the, the, the markings. So the street was basically back to normal. However, then that coincided with all of the, the donuts. So, and, and I would say that the conversation also was, was centered around, here's a great opportunity to try and push for these things. DOT now has in its toolbox, these, the mix of curb humps and kind of these, these quick curbs and these ways to kind of make the turning radiuses um, uh, tighter. So therefore cars have to slow down more. So even like set aside the bikes, that's fine. That was killed. Set aside, re, you know, changing the direction of 235th or 236. People didn't like that. It was going to have a parking impact. Right. Yeah. We're and not talking about any of those I know, I know, I know, but yeah, I'm just, just, I'm just trying to refresh the, the conversation. My point is this, right. my point is this, that these are tried and true treatments that, that, that DOT kind mm -hmm. of, has in their toolkit, there's an endorsement on the table. I don't know why we wouldn't move forward with it if it was endorsed. And earlier tonight, we're all talking about pedestrian safety in our community and how at KPOC and Johnson, obviously is very tragic and this big thing, the Sedgwick is, is, is an issue. Maybe, you know, there are accidents there. There's just another one waiting to happen. Well, what's to say that, that you couldn't have identified the same thing about this part of independence? or other parts of independence that had come up through that other conversation too, like the section where there's no sidewalk between 232nd South to 231st, or the section that came up earlier tonight that the, uh, the, the assembly member pointed, or you know, was talking about the intersection. How about getting down to that intersection when there's only sidewalk on the Henry Hudson Park side, the park, not parkway, side of the street, not on the, on the other side of the street. So, mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, we have a resolution to do something or ask DOT to do something. Uh, either, you know, I, I think we should move forward with it if we think that it's going to help address the, the, the pedestrian safety issues. And, and as opposed to regretting it and not doing it because people are worried about some impacts and then see what happens, you know. Okay. All right. Thank you, Michael. And also just to, for the for folks who are new on the committee, Michael was on the work group as well and did great work on the, uh, uh, along with Mary Ellen on, uh, and David on uh, trying to suss all this stuff out with the community. We had a lot of, lot of uh, great calls on it. Um, Bar Bob Armistead, your hand is up. Thank you. Um, I just want some clarification. You mentioned uh, drag racing earlier. Is that on the table for a discussion or did, were you suggesting that that's been? Uh, so um, a year ago, um, back in 2020, there was a drag racing issue uh, with a lot of 311 complaints and um, a lot, of, a lot of, um, uh, of, of complaints to the board regarding drag racing on Independence Avenue. And so we put together a work, working group. There, there was basically, um, Dan Paternak was the chair at that time, and he took a two-pronged approach. One was on enforcement and speed cameras, and, and the other was on um, a structural changes to Independence Avenue. And so there was a work group that was formed. Um, it, it, like all work groups, it's formed temporarily and reports back to the committee at, on its findings. The work group lasted for about three months, I think. And then it came back to the committee and then we had a series of meetings to discuss different aspects of recommendations made by the work group that were intended to reduce the radius of the intersections um, and reduce the width of Independence Avenue. 
at the end of the work group, at the end of all of these meetings, at the end of all of this discussion, we passed a resolution to install um, flexible delineators at specific locations um, in order to um, neck in the intersections that are very wide on Interpendence Avenue. But when I went over the summer to actually um, log these and get the, this resolution going with DOT, um, th that was when I discovered that this was going to be kind of a, a blank check, that it would, uh, in, I would need to indicate to DOT that there was a safety concern at each of these intersections. And then um, the, I, was, I was told that once we inform them of a safety decision, then they do a study and they do, uh, um, they would do a pedestrian safety study and that that pedestrian safety study would come back with whatever recommendations they wanted to do. We would have an opportunity to comment on it, but that we wouldn't likely change much about mm -hmm. it. We maybe small changes here and there. And that having been through the process with the community on Independence Avenue and a lot of discussion, my, um, my hunch was that the community would feel betrayed if they were, if they were given curb cuts and um, more extensive um, infrastructure than they had planned. That they, really we had come to them and said, flexible delineators is what we're talking about. So I, I wanted to raise this issue. Um, we can certainly discuss it and actually have the committee vote next, next at the next meeting. I wanted to raise it and get people thinking about it of whether we want to allow it to sit and then we can simply make this recommendation on these intersections and I can send the resolution out again just to refresh people. Um, or we can um, uh, decide to uh, uh, pull it back um, to repeal it. And then if we want to make some, you know, do pedestrian you know, improvements on Independence Avenue, those individual issues can be raised at another point by people who live in the neighborhood. Um, so that was, that was the, that's the history of it. Does uh, that make it, does that make it clear? Uh, that helps out. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question is, um, I guess uh, I don't have a solution here. I do have a problem, and that is the drag. We call it drag racing. It's they're not they're not racing side by side. They're exercising. Mm -hmm. um, they now have a clear run from the speed bump, which I think is in front of the temple. Um, uh, on was it two thirty seven two thirty seven uh, all the way through the traffic light down. Uh, to 246th Street, um, which is a which if you're in a car and you want to let it out, that is plenty of room to get up to over 50 miles an hour. Which is there not a speed bump in that in that stretch between 237 and 246? I thought that there was. There's there's one in I think it's in front of the temple, in front of the it goes between the temple and the uh, and the elementary and the and the and the, the high school. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's another one until you get to the end of the avenue at 246. Okay. And what they are doing is I can hear them revving up after they get past the speed bump and they have a good stretch where they reach, I am i don't clock them, but they're over 50 miles an hour. So you're saying the drag racing is still happening? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's moved uh, to that stretch from the speed bump in, in front of, um, uh, the high school, Kingsbridge Academy, right? Okay. All right. Uh, and, and they have a nice stretch all the way to 240, uh, excuse me, to, uh, yeah, 246th Street. And often, um, I don't know if it's every night, but it's, it's close enough. It starts uh, after dark, two o'clock in the morning. Uh, they go by here. They're not racing side by side. Uh, they are going very, very fast. And, um, I wish something could be done about it. I personally, I don't think uh, delineators have uh, will have any effect on it. I think a speed bump uh, would slow them, would 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 ruin it for their uh, for their activities. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, that's my suggestion. But uh, right. Well, I know the speed bumps have been very helpful in terms of uh, eliminating a lot of the drag racing that was happening. To Michael's yeah. point, the, the the most of this was happening after they had repaved Independence Avenue and removed the speed bumps. And once they put them back, um, I think we saw a big reduction. But um, but thank you. And then I'm gonna I've got two more hands, and then I'm gonna uh, wrap this up. We'll we'll table we'll table this for the next meeting. Um, Dan Patternack, what you. do you have to say? Yeah, no, totally. Thank you. 
Yeah, I just want to follow up. Michael, I do have that resolution in front of me, the one that went to the board, and we were pretty specific with the stuff that we wanted. And to your point, not only were we specific in that resolution, we gave them the PowerPoint that you created showing exactly where everything is. Yep, so, it's very specific. But, so, you know, somebody had mentioned about like, perhaps we were vague, we weren't. We we're extremely specific and we sent them pictures. Yeah, we're not vague. What we're, here, what we're seeing here again is DOT, and this is my concern earlier in the meeting with your letters, right? You send them something and they essentially turn back and say, well, you gave us the issue, so we're gonna do whatever we want. And essentially that's what they're saying here. You know, you're telling us you want something very specific, but we don't care, we're gonna do whatever we want. And listen, I'm, I'm not really ready to discuss this issue. And I think it really no, needs to go back into the public, you know, before anything else is done. But to your point, Michael, we're extremely specific. There, were, there was no doubt to what we were asking DOT to do and they got pictures with it. So thank I, I should just say, I, I I said watered down in one place. I wasn't saying big. I was talking about oh, Deb's oh, yeah, concern yeah. of if do we leave it too open ended? They take it. But I think oh, your yeah. point is we may have been specific, but they might say, "Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to address it our own way," and that that's the mismatch. That's and this is saying. the problem right. with, with present day DOT, Understood. which our elected officials and quite frankly the people need to start getting involved in. Um, Thank you, Deb. Yeah, totally. Uh, Vittorio, do you uh, have anything to say on this specific issue? Yes, I wanted to inquire about um, uh, patrols in this area. I I, uh, I know that this has been discussed previously that we were going to see stuffed up patrols over here. I live near this area, and we also have this problem uh, along Henry Hudson Parkway. Uh, and I recall seeing some patrols uh, after this happened, shortly after for a little while, and they disappeared. So I would like to see that come back into play again. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, I think we've had a, it's been a good meeting. It's a good discussion. Um, uh, any new business? I, I had originally put suggestions for projects or things that people were interested in. If you've got something, Ed, do you have something you want to, you want to add? I just wanted to clarify I, I, on this, this last thing. So are we moving okay. forward with, uh, to, for the next meeting, just to come to some conclusion, whether we're going to rescind this, because the information that you, you know, you discovered afterwards about they're just going to kind of unilaterally do whatever they want. I think that's extremely significant. And I think it's pretty established that that's what's going to happen. So I think we should revisit that. And, you know, perhaps if necessary, have more input from the community on that particular matter, because that seems to be their MO moving forward that so I don't, you know, it's gonna and that's going to be difficult to work with. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the uh, my thought was that I wanted to raise it to check my own instincts with the committee. Um, and then it seems clear that the, that there's a, some su there's support for rescinding and at least having a conversation about rescinding. And so I will, I'll put it on the agenda for next month to talk about uh, actually like if we feel comfortable moving forward and we can put it on the agenda. That way people from Independence Avenue can also come in and, uh, and give their, their two cents. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Um, so I do, uh, Dan, I do want to move on to new business. Um, yeah, that's it. it. It's well, it's a little bit old, but it was the point that David raised at the beginning of the meeting, which I hadn't gotten back to, which was the open meetings law question that he had. Okay. Is that new? Uh, I guess it would be outstanding business. You know, I okay. raised it at the beginning when David spoke and you said to hold off on it. Oh, okay. I thought we were, okay. I thought you we were considered gonna... old. You can consider it new. It doesn't really matter to me. Okay. So what, do you have something to... Yeah, so David, I wanted to answer your question from earlier. The open meetings law issue, you know, I had raised after the meeting at TNT last month when you guys were discussing the topic of doing a, a letter. And, you know, some committee members, you, you know, I think it was like a three of the five committee members speaking on topic said that they wanted, you know, to restore the intersection. Two of the members said they weren't sure. Then the conversation went out to talk about a letter. And then, you know, the top, the, the conversation in the committee, and, you know, I went back to, to look at it, it was basically, okay, we'll, we'll throw around a letter. And then I think David, you had said in the middle of that meeting, okay, we'll try to reach consensus. And if we don't, we'll bring it back to the next meeting. So that was a concern, which I had raised with Marty about circulating this letter. And there's something that I just want to read to kind of keep this out there. And, and you know, it, it's something that we always need to kind of remind ourselves about. And I think it's a great topic for Marty to bring out in an LRE meeting to kind of get out to the committees as well. And that's this, and I'm gonna read something from an advisory opinion, which is kind of a very good 
starting point for everybody on the community board, and that's this. The open meetings law is intended to provide the public with the right to observe the performance of public officials in their deliberations. That intent cannot be realized if members of a public body conduct public business as a body or vote by phone, by email, or, or by mail. And this is from an advisory opinion. And, and I believe Marty had a conversation um, with either, you know, Laura or Deb regarding the topic and, yeah, and the mail. He didn't, yeah, I, I did not have a conversation. Yeah, I, I wasn't privy to that, but I, I, I you know, it, and it was mentioned that, you know, there was some communication going out about this. And, and I just wanna point out one other point, you know, and this, you know, it gets into an area and we've discussed this over the years on different topics and, and in different issues that have come up, you know, so I'm gonna read one more sentence, that's this. A series of communications between individual members or telephone calls among the members, which results in a collective decision, a meeting held by means of a telephone conference or series of telephone calls, or a vote taken by mail or email, would in my opinion be inconsistent with the law. And that was from a, a, a decision which was incorporated into um, an advisory opinion. And that was the issue, David, that I had raised the topic with Marty after the last meeting, because my concern is that the public didn't have an opportunity to observe the performance. Now, understand, it's not just a vote. You know, the vote is just one of the things that are happening. It's that discussion back and forth amongst members that the public has a right to see. And, you know, one of the things and, and you know, uh, it's a topic I want to bring up again is, again, when the public wants to speak on an issue, I always say be conservative, you know, go along with meetings. And I was no, notorious for having some of the longest meetings on the community board because I always erred on the side of caution. We don't have any specific time that we end meetings. You know, when you look at Robert's uh, rules, Dan, that's, excuse that's me, fine. Dad, excuse me. When you look at Robert's rules, there's actually a provision that goes into the fact that we don't curb discussion because of time. So, you know, for me, and I think for all of the committee members, it should be extremely important that we're listening to the public. That's what we're here for. We're here to advocate for the public and be a liaison with agencies. And, you know, these points I'm going to raise again. I'm going to raise them again in LRE. And it's something, you know, in these topics that, that I hope committee members are mindful of. So, David, I hope that answers your question. I was the one who raised the issue. That's why I raised the issue. And I'm more than willing to talk about it at any time. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you, Dan. I, I, I appreciate it. And, and I think you raised some uh, uh, valid uh, concerns, but I, I think it's a bit misplaced here because the conversation that we had, I think at the, at the end of that meeting was saying, we've heard a number of opinions, we've been going back and forth, it would be worthwhile to put something to paper so that it could be discussed in detail in public at the next meeting. But it's so certainly, that, it's certainly yeah. that was the intent, where, whether uh, the, 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 um, some of the words did not uh, completely uh, address that. That was the intent to enable a document to be developed so that it could be discussed at the next meeting. So David, so, two so points. Just, so, I'm sorry, David, just no, let me, let me just, I'm sorry, read that. Uh, no, but just, Dan, just for a second. David, let me just, just Dan, so, Dan, just for a second. David, I just take the, I'm going to steal the chair. Second. So can you just uh, stop for one moment? I just want to respond to what David was saying. That, because I just want to correct for a moment that, the, that it, is a common, it is common practice for issues where there is, um, there is the, it was just a matter of wording but not a matter of different decision. There was no decision making or deliberation happening. We were attempting to find the correct words. Um, and so that is why I, I don't believe and that I've, other people who are on the call don't believe that there was an open meetings law violation. Oh. I will admit, I, this is my, that was my very first meeting as a chair, but I do think that I, I encourage you to go to the law, the law rules and ethics committee and have a conversation with them about that um, interaction because the, 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 the simply to find the correct words for a letter that is shared among the whole committee so that there is consensus. I made sure that everybody on the committee ag agreed and that Laura was part of the, the process. It was nothing, there was no attempt to hide anything and that the letter was always going to be brought back to read, be read in the public. So, so Deb, Deb uh, I agree. understand a few things. Well, well, David, one, 
I'm going to send you the link so you could see the actual conversation. But two, again, what you're saying right now is proving the point, Deb, of what I was saying from the advisory opinion. The public has a right to see that back and forth. And you had different, you're saying you're trying to reach consensus to send a letter on, on, to the language. Me, so send them a so, letter. So, but so Dan, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to. DOT, but here's the thing. Your language was asking DOT to do something. And you're asking committee members to reach consensus or agreement on what to ask DOT to do. The public has a right to see that and hear that discussion. And that's the point. So um, it's 944. Thank you, Dan, for your uh, explanation of that. Um, I, but I, I think we, we've uh, come, to, come to the end of the meeting. Is there anybody else who would like to uh, add anything to new business? Omar, do you have your waiting. hand up for yeah? Do you have your hand up for this or do for something else? I wanted to add something and raise something uh, okay. the, for the committee. Uh, my name is Omar Suarez. I'm a community member. I live at 4568 Manhattan College Parkway. Uh, this is my first meeting with CB8, although not my first community board meeting. Welcome. Um, so thank you. And uh, this is a building that is next door to the Manhattan College uh, uh, parking lot driveway. And next door to that is the uh, one train yard, the uh, one line train yard. Okay. And that's the issue I wanted to bring up. Uh, <clears throat> the trains, not, not all, uh, not when pulling into the station, but those that pull into the train yard, I mean, the, the, the noise is excruciating um, and it happens at some of the most inconvenient times of the day. I wanted, I looked into this, uh, the MTA has released some reports about noise cancellation and some actions that they're supposed to be taking or are able to take. I wanted to raise this for the committee. You know, has any, has anyone brought this up? Is any action been taken about this, this noise coming from the train yard? Uh, you know, and, and what can we do to get some more response from our MTA or, or DOT or whoever the relevant agency is, um, because the I mean it's it's really unbearable. Um, okay, thank you. thank you for raising it. I am not aware I mean, of uh, of the issue being raised prior, but if you could um, send an email to the board office with the details, um, then we can kind of look into it, and Kira can look into it. I mean, she may have some just uh, some history on it, or kind of know more context. We can kind of get the ball rolling. Who is that? Who should I address it to? Uh, to the, the community board office. I'm gonna, I'll pull up the, I'm very bad at remembering it off the top of my head. It's bx08.cb.nyc.gov. Thank you, David. Did you get that, Omar? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm on the newsletter. So if it's the same email, then I can, um, you can then respond I'll, I'll respond to that general inbox if that's uh, the right place to send it to. Yeah, there are actual people at the other side of that. So yeah, that's a great way to get not, started. Not always the case, but I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> it's a very responsive uh, um, mailbox. Yeah, the office is great. So um, yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you for raising it. Um, uh, Mary, did you have something you wanted to say? Or it did, thank you. Um, you know, I, I joined this meeting specifically because it was going to involve a discussion about 27 27 Palisade and the flooding. And, um, you know, we there were quite a few of us that had our hands raised. And, uh, you know, I wasn't called on. There was a lot of misinformation um, being uh, discussed or being thrown out as fact by some committee members. Um, at the last meeting, we had maybe 80 to 90 shareholders that attended your meeting. But I want to stay to the facts. I'm going to be really brief. Um, I was part of the committee that actually met with um, First Deputy for Jean this past Friday. Um, so we're not really some fringe group out there. She took the time to email us directly to set up an appointment. And so uh, here are the facts of the outcome of that meeting. Deputy Commissioner Forjone acknowledged the cement needs to be cut back. Deputy Commissioner Forjone acknowledged the stormwater is not going to the existing catch basins because of course new catch basins would take 15 to 20 years 
to, to establish. We already have existing catch basin. She did an on-site examination, spent time with us, walked around. Deputy Commissioner Forjone acknowledged the current configuration needs to be changed. These are all facts. You can go to Assemblyman Dinowitz, you can go to Councilman Dinowitz, all right, they were also there. And we conveyed our position that we want the sidewalk restored to the original config configuration, excuse me, because it has prevented flooding for the last 70 years, okay? Not Sandy, but I was able to do a quick Google search. Uh, 1966, we had 5.5 inches of rain. 69, 6.2 inches of rain. So over 70 years, there have been significant rainstorms. Right now, restoring the sidewalk to its original configuration is the only proven solution that, that will prevent our building from flooding. And so, uh, you know, those are facts, not misinformation that I'm hearing from, from, com from committee members. It's, it's really frightening that that's happening. And I think people should be more aware of the facts. Um, and that's where we stand right now. We are currently awaiting a response from the deputy commissioner. Uh, and I was gonna end by saying, we want the support of the committee, but uh, you know, it clearly it's, it's, it's split and uh, it isn't, and nobody is listening to uh, the residents. So those are the facts as they stand today. So, um, so thank you for, this, for the update, Mary. I, I do want to be clear that um, we'll be putting together a resolution that'll go to exec tomorrow, and that the you know the resolution will be you know I can read it again if you want. I mean, it was what we discussed on the call um, that uh, urges DOT to remove the curb extensions and restore the street to its previous design, preserving pedestrian safety while reducing impervious surface integrating green infrastructure, rebuilding the curb on the west side of Palisade Avenue and incorporating new stormwater catch basins as needed and to bring their plan back to the committee. But that was the-, the Fine. Now we are expecting to get a response directly from the, the first deputy commissioner. We are not a bunch of hysterical people running around making up stories. The fact is 70 years, this building has never flooded. Okay. Rest my case. All right, then. And on that, thank you. On that note, thank you. Um, I, any other new business? I think that's it. Um, all right. So I think we are at what the end of the adjourn? meeting. We, I would like I, to move I to second the, motion. second the motion. You can't second it before I've even said it, Ed. David, David, <laughs> I did. David, I did. David put the motion. All right. You guys are moving faster than me. Um, all right. So we seconded. It's uh, 9.52. A time to go to bed. Thank you all for a good meeting. Um, thank you. We'll see you in a, in a few more weeks. Good night. Thank you. Good night.